When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you could save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your moves. Blog Talk Radio. Here we go. Let them know. Season 7, another lesson. Seek truth, social media group. It's our showtime, I'm on a year's run. It's new, we're here to debate for you It's clear that we're breaking through I congratulate the crew, it's just uh-huh. a few Shows and platforms with honor and virtue Round table special guests calling to alert you All the information people say is relevant Different views, mono we mono and settle it If you don't know, we got what you need And style showtime debate talk for you With the brand new season Season I was surfing the net, one day I found the show Hit the download button and I was ready to go Topics ranging from all kind of things I should know It was bringing the glow, Block Talk Radio It's a whole new breed, road to succeed Study ways to give the globe what they need The code, unfolding the scrolls to be freed From the woes that was told by those who stampede Seek truth, fill it, yeah, the style red Elohim turns swords into plowshares Furry hatchet, word flurry, swirl match it Spit it out, then wait, the world catch it Prophecy, you must rise, truth must lies, two plus five, fear God you wise, rhythm let them have it, give them lyrics automatic, spread the fabric, speaking dudes in the habit, thinking my tutorial, the scriptures, my fingers are slipping, the pages and getting, information that's written, hitting the studio, charged up, blazing and spitting, it's amazing they glisten and people pay me to listen so I continue to rock like Will Smith, rise to the top, Jazzy Jeff, the success just don't stop, first Grammy ever given in hip hop, debate talk for you family, get props. Yo style show be true Yo style show be true Yo style show be true Change all your views, change all your views. Yeah. The 
Radio. Yeah. God of music, 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 music. 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 That's our popular demand. You're now listening to the Big Talk You Radio. Hey, what's up? Hey, it's what's Uncle up? E from the Uncle E Show on YouTube. You're now listening to Bait Talk for You Radio. Please check in every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Call up if you got questions. The number is 319-527-6239. Please press 1 for questions and comments. And also check out my show on YouTube at Renegades TV. Big shout out to my brother, Sal Showtime. Let's get it. Hi, this is Tyrone Thompson, host of the Blog Talk Radio broadcast, Talk Real Solutions. Please tune in and listen to all of our shows seven nights a week at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. At Talk Real Solutions, we cover a variety of topics to ensure we speak about what may be needed in our community at any time. Talk Real Solution is the hottest blog talk radio show going on right now. You can listen to our broadcast at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash talk real solutions or visit our website at www.talkrealsolutions.com. Also like our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash talk real solutions. You can call in at any time during the show and add to the conversation and offer your solutions at one 357 8453 that's one 358 357 because at Talk Real Solutions, we want to make sure you have a chance to talk real solutions. Peace and blessings, family. This is your good, humble brother, Basim, representing the DMV area. And when I'm not holding down my mid-level position in corporate America, I'm tuned into the most respected debate show on the globe. That's Debate Talk for You with the esteemed host, Sal Showtime. You don't want to miss checking out the most controversial video of the year. Everybody's talking about it. A video produced by Absolute Bible Truth teacher, Brother Josh. The video is entitled, Is There a Secret Gay Agenda Amongst the Comedic Conscious Groups? Once again, it's one of the most talked about videos right now. And you want to make sure you go check it out. So go to the website, www.absolutebibletruth.com forward slash store. And once you get it, it's an automatic download. You don't have to wait for it to be sent to you in the mail. It's an automatic download. So once again, go check out the video, get it fast, and get it now. Welcome to another episode of the Bait Talk for You. I'm your host, Sal Showtime. And welcome back to the show live. I appreciate everybody out there that's been supporting the show over the years. And we want to have your continued support by going to www.paypal.com. Use the email, you at gmail.com. We need your support in order for us to have the show available to the masses each and every month. Because, of course, we have monthly fees in order for the show to remain on the air. So, once again, we appreciate the support out there, people. Again, if you want to show your support... Go to www.paypal.com and use the email to base talk for you at gmail.com. So if you love what you hear, you love the content, you love the segments, and a special guest that come on the show, please keep us on the air. We love you guys. Again, show your support. You know, the email on love. Hey. 
Hey guys, this is G-Man from Preaching to the Choir Ministries. I got to make this quick. Yo, I'm offering General Tazariot, General Johanna, Pastor Dowell, and Donald Ringo $100 per hour to call my YouTube channel to debate me. I particularly want the ISUPK on them, uh, particularly General Johanna or Tazariot, and I will gladly give Sal the money up front for those boys to come on my YouTube channel to prove to me whether or not Jesus actually died for the nation of Israel or did, did Jesus die for the sins of the whole world. And that would include the so-called white man. And I would love to have that discussion between those two. Also, when you guys aren't listening to Debate Talk for you, I know you guys get a lot of great material here. Check out the G Podcast on the same channel. Type in G-Man and you'll see the G Podcast every Monday at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Every Monday. 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, where you see Christians and the black Hebrew Israelites going back and forth. You'll see Vocab Malone, myself, you'll see Faithful, and a plethora of other people. And guys, I know you listen to Debate Talk for you. Get back to your debate, and peace. God bless. Of the beats, the beat talking radio. This is Ronald Francois representing from Atlanta, Georgia. And when I'm not busy in the studio, I'm checking out the bait talk for you radio. Keep up the great work, Sal Showtime. Hey, what's going on, family? How you guys doing? Welcome to another show. You're now listening to Season 7 of Debate Talk for You. I'm your host, Al Showtime, and we're back with the Relationship Challenge. That's right. Once again, the Relationship Challenge is back once again on Season 7 of Debate Talk for You. And actually, this is Volume 20 of the Relationship Challenge, and we appreciate the support out there, the people that's listening to the Relationship Challenge segment of Debate Talk. We're uh, radio hosted by Muno Israel. I believe she's here right now. And, of course, I see a lot of people calling in via phone and via Skype. I'll down that number, 64, uh, so actually the new, uh, the new number, sorry about that, see, I was about to give you the old number. <laughs> the new number is 319-527-6239. I'm so used to that old number. I got to get used to the new number. Once again, it's 319-527-6239. A brand new number to the show. You can call it via phone and via Skype. And we appreciate all the people out there that are spreading awareness of the, the, radio, the radio show and the new number out there. Tonight's show is entitled... Dressing for the part, who wears the pants? That's right, people. Tonight's show, once again, is entitled Dressing for the Part, Who Wears the Pants? We're going to get a brief breakdown of what this title is, really entails uh, by the host, and we bring her in right now. This is the First Lady of Debate Talk for you. Amuna, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Brother Sal. Thank you. Good night. And uh, I pray everybody's doing well. All praise be to the most high. It's going to be an interesting conversation. How are you this evening, Brother? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Looking forward to hearing this particular uh, topic, <laughs> <laughs> what it entails. But, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Let me bring in uh, the home panel right about now. We have Mayana, Sister Mayana. Welcome to the show. Oh, by the way, one of the best people, if you need some flyers done, <laughs> reach out to Mayana. Mayana, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for that plug, brother. I really appreciate that. Good night, everybody. As um, you've heard, this is the voice of Mayana calling you from Brooklyn. And agreed, the topic is going to be uh, very good because there's a lot of dialogue about the position a woman is supposed to uh, hold in our government, uh, in our nation, and in our homes. So often that kind of conversation lends itself to even what she should wear. And pants has been one of the topics that has been on the minds of the people. I think that um, speaking to what Sal said about let's getting a, getting a little bit of insight into the reason for the topic, before we do that, I think that what should be clarified is that for me at least as I engage the topic, what, what I'm not going to do is speak against women wearing um dresses or skirts or anything like that. Instead, what we're going to do is really interrogate the argument and check the veracity of the argument. If the end goal is to interrogate modesty, whether or not the conversation we use to um, to forward that is uh, the appropriate language and the appropriate verses and the appropriate mindset. So uh, for me, 
that's what, what I think this conversation is going to to yield and bring out. And one of the things that we're going to kind of flesh out for the people, we have a lot of questions out there in media land. I don't know if you guys have seen that. But sometime during the course of the segment, we'll give you the results of the poll uh, when we ask the people whether or not women should wear pants, women in Israel specifically. All right, once again, that's Mayana Johnson right there, uh, home panelist for the Debate Talk View. And let's go to Water Swordsman, a.k.a. the Fireman. What's going on, brother? What's up, brother? Big child. How y'all sisters doing? I'm in the house. You know how we do. How you doing, brother? Right, anything ha- yeah, anything hey, happening in the world? What's happening with you, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything good. Uh, tomorrow, my show is going to be on uh, Night of Fire. We're talking about uh, a nation divided. A nation of against itself can't stand. I'm going to go hard on it. I hope people call in. Nobody been really, well, it's new, so we're going to see what's happening. But that's the topic that we need to talk. Because you know me, I'm going in on things that we don't like to discuss as Hebrews. We like to just take a blind eye to them. So tomorrow's show going to be fire again. And every week is going to get hotter and hotter. So I'm just going to put that out there. I'm going to leave it like that. I no doubt. Make sure you check that out. And I actually I invited uh well actually Brother Mercy reached out to me today and apparently he saw the topic on the Blog Talk Radio website. I was like, Listen, Sal, I wanna join in in the conversation. So we waiting for Brother Mercy to call in. Uh, as soon as he called in, of course we got, I'm gonna add him in this conversation. Uh Muna, take it away. Uh yes. Uh greetings and welcome once again. Shout out to Sister Mayana Brother of War and um Brother Mercy, when he comes on the panel and all the listening audience, again, for this season of Debate Talk for you, we definitely want to make it in, more interactive, bringing the audience earlier on in the conversation, hear your concerns, questions, and comments. And so, again, we're interrogating the doctrine about the, an interpretation, basically. The doctrine is based on an interpretation as to whether or not women are allowed to wear pants and whether or not pants in and of themselves is exactly what the portion of Deuteronomy 22 and I believe 5 is speaking of. And so, again, I know we are oftentimes trying to uh, bring a, a, a foreign to us or an ancient concept and transplant it into modern times and then assume that that's what it's speaking about and The issue is that it becomes dangerous, as we can see, because people will do this with whatever they want, and then there will be so many varying doctrines that cause further division as opposed to helping us to come together as a collective. So basically off the top, off the top, we'll just ask the question, can women wear pants? And is Deuteronomy 22 and 5 speaking about pants? Specifically, I'll go to Brother War, and then I'm coming to Sister Mayana, and um, we can kind of put it out there because people will have conversations, but they haven't declared their standpoint. And I know that for those who, for a long time, have been in this way, they have a consensus already, you know. And then we try to dance around it, we watch Tutsi around it, and then we finally, till we get to the point, and then just declare whatever we really felt from the beginning. So I ask from the beginning, Brother Awar, have you been taught that Deuteronomy 22 and 5 is speaking about pants? Um, let us know your thoughts on that. Just straight out the gate, Brother Awar. Okay. All right. Well, well, let me let me read it right. This Deuteronomy 22 and 5. It says, "A woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God." So, anything that pertaineth to a man. So we got to see what pertaineth to a man. Well, they used to call pants breeches. And in front of bridges is a zipper. And the reason why, because bridges were made to pertain to a man. Why? Because something come out the front of that zipper. So anything that pertains to a man, a woman should wear, and a man shouldn't wear anything that pertains to a woman, something that a woman would wear or pertain to. That's like me putting, a woman putting on pants would be like me putting on a bra. Because a bra pertains to a woman. Why? Because a woman has breasts, and that's what the that's what goes in the bra. So that pertains to a woman. So that's what it means. And it said it's an abomination. 
And then to say this too, articles of clothing carry carry vibration. That's why when you go to war, you wear war apparel. When you uh, go to dinner, you wear dinner apparel or whatever thing you're going to deal with. You wear if you go to sleep, you wear apparel for going to sleep. So if you in the vibration, like if you look, watch women on a YouTube when they fight, they put on war like man like apparel to fight. So I just believe. That's what I believe, that a woman shouldn't wear a dress, I mean, wear a pants, because it pertains to a man. And if anybody do that, I think they break, they're doing this abomination. That's what the scriptures say. I'll pass the mic on that. All right. Thank you for that, Brother Wall. You said a number of things that I kind of wanted to touch on, but I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm going to come to Sister Mayana uh, and ask the same question, whether it be based on doctrine or understanding of that particular Deuteronomy 22. Just, just, just surface for right now as we get in the the warm-up, as it relates to Deuteronomy 22 and 5, speaking specifically of pants, uh, your thoughts and and questions. Again, audience members, if you're out there, and we know you're out there, you know, we're going to have early interaction as we proceed with this conversation so that hopefully we could come to a level of understanding. So, Sister Mayana, the mic is yours. Uh, Thank you for that. Um, Actually, it's pretty clear from the context that Deuteronomy 22 and 5 is not and cannot possibly be talking about pants. Um, There's a lot of extrapolation um, and imagination employed by the people who have constructed this argument and and placed Deuteronomy 25 in the center. But construction and imagination does not uh, equate facts in any way. Unfortunately, the context and the Hebrew doesn't agree or support this idea. Uh, it was interesting to hear what emphasized the word pertain, which doesn't appear in the Hebrew at all. Instead, what the Hebrew uh, actually has is the word higher, which means to be or to become. So the prohibition or the concern or the caution has to do with a woman becoming like by way of, um, the word here is kiel, which is not a garment, by the way. It's not speaking about garments, because we have words for garments. And um, the, gar- the word garment appears later in this verse, but it doesn't appear here. Instead, the word kiel is here. And um, that was the concern. Women taking up and becoming through using these tools. A, and that's another thing. The other word that he emphasized was man. But the word man doesn't appear here in the sentence either. The word here is very clearly um, for the woman, Isha. We see the word Isha or Ayasha, depending on where you are in your Hebrew, um, the word woman. The counterbalance is not man, which would have been Ish or Ayasha, depending, again, where you are in your Hebrew. Instead, the word Gabar is there, or Geber, or Geber, again, depending on uh, what Hebrew you adhere to. So the fact that this, this kind of, the counterbalance, is not just any man. There's a very specific type of man, and again, there's specific tools, and there's this idea of being or becoming that type of man that this prohibition speaks to. There is um, merit in looking into the Hebrew, especially when we have this kind of specificity. And this is something that when we have our discussions about studying, we look at the context and we look at the language that is used by the ancestors. And when they are this specific about something, again, the specificity is in that it's not just any man. It's a great man or a man of war or a man of a particular type. And this is the, and the concern is about being, not pertaining to or wearing, but being this type of person. And this, it's for the women to understand that. And for this type of person, not to uh, take on the clothing. And in this, in this sense, now we're talking about garments. There's a word here that um, has to do with the word garment. It's, I'll pronounce it later in the show. Um, but this word is a garment word. And um, there's a prohibition against this great man putting on this type of mantle. The idea here is about maintaining a certain type of order, but also about a certain type of responsibility. Everybody understanding their responsibility and obligation to one another. Again, contextually, we see with Deuteronomy 
22 is dealing with. If you find your neighbor in a, in a particular position, this is how you deal with them. If, if, if this happens, this is what you do. And this idea of not hiding yourself um, from order or from responsibility or from your duties. Um, typically, when we find things that are so specific, again, such as a woman versus a man of, of uh, position, it looks like a man of war possibly, that kind of specificity normally, usually if you uh, really dig into it, has to do with a prohibition against what's going on in the shared culture context. Israel never existed in a vacuum. And because we never existed in a vacuum, we, we lived among other people who engaged in behaviors that were not the type of behaviors we should emulate or, or, or participate in. And so some of these prohibitions, especially those that are this specific, usually lend themselves to caution against embracing those things. And we, uh, we know from study that there was a certain type of uh, feast that expected for men and women to change their garments, particularly a woman taking on the garments of war and a man who would normally be a soldier taking on the garments of a female. So that would be a, a cultural context. But these are things that we can explore as the conversation continues and as we get calls and thoughts from the audience. But those are my opening thoughts on the matter. Thank you. And uh, that's to let you know, Amona, uh, Brother Mercy is here. Just let you know. All right, thank you for that, Brother Sal. I had, to, I had a little baby baby uh, vibration over here. Thank you for that, Sister um, Mayana. Brother Mercy, uh, thank you and welcome. I'm just going to hold it and throw you in the pot right now. The conversation is uh, who wears the pants. Um, the question that's on the table is, uh, with your current understanding, is it an abomination, basically? And this is the terminology, and I think Brother Ward brought it out. Uh, for a woman to wear pants, and further, are pants exclusively a man's garment? Brother Mercy, your thoughts? Uh, yes, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, this is a very good discussion uh, about I think the scripture says in the Torah that uh, men, should wear, men should not wear clothing pertaining to a woman, and the woman should not wear clothing pertaining to a man. Now, what we have to do is we have to, to of course, define, uh, which is already defined for us. If we go to the local clothing store, uh, you have a woman's department, you have a man's department. So, um I, I think that the key here is the the clothes pertaining. But however, the pants do have a connotative meaning to some to, to, to some of our listening audience out there to mean that when you wear the pants that comes with a certain level of authority or you the man because you wear the pants. I think that saying or that cliche has you know, has set an our uh another meaning to just wearing it. I don't think it's just the pants, but I think the pants represent something. So in that case, um, you know, we have to look at whether or not we're talking about just pants, because you got women pants, you got female pants, you got men pants, and we're talking about where the pants as in should they leave the household. Because some people say, I wear the pants, so that means, you know, that it has a connotative meaning. So uh, with that being said, I would like to say that I think that uh, women should wear clothing pertaining to women, and men should wear clothing pertaining to men. Now, when we go past that and we start saying clothing has meaning attached to it, uh, we may get into trouble. But in that case, I think men should wear the pants in the house. Uh, but I'm talking figuratively, of course. But that's all I had to say. All right. That was the voice of Brother Mercy. Seems like all the panelists are here. If you're listening at this time and you'd like to join the conversation, feel free to press 1, and so I will allow you into the queue. I think there are many things going on, and I want to thank everybody for opening up on their thoughts. I think many things are going on with this conversation. Um, I see a lot of time travel going on, you know, a lot, a lot of hopscotch between then and now. Um, you know, uh, and for me, contextually, I think Sister Mayana brought up some very interesting things as it relates to the culture and things that were going on in and around Israel that the Creator specifically wanted to make a differentiation between them and you. And this was the things that the Creator said, even in bringing, through his prophet, bringing Israel into the land, that the nations round about you, they do some stuff. And I don't want you to do these things, because when you do these things, 
it's going to get you in the same position as they are. And so when you look at even some of the culture of being a, a warrior princess, so to say, of being a female in battle, I think something that was brought out earlier, it bears looking into if we're going to deal with what the scripture says and stay there and then begin to work our way to now. Because if we misconstrue the scripture based on now, then, of course, we're going to come to these conclusions. But if we look at the text for what it is saying, and some people don't want to do that, not saying anyone here, but I have noticed that we don't want to do that because it's a bit laborious. You know, we actually have to look at things within its context. For instance, something was brought out that the word there for man is not ish or ish. It's gever, a strong man. The word for keli or what pertaineth unto him is not garments or clothes. It's talking about items and articles. And when you and I've done this many years ago, and you know, it's something that I always had in the forefront of my mind. But if you haven't done it, I bid you to please do it. Even for those who say, "Oh, the Hebrew is tainted," but the reality is, the English version that you're reading is based off the Hebrew. And why is this important in my estimation? Context. It's important because of context. Because if we're going to talk about, and Brother War brought it up, and I'll go back to Brother War after this. We spoke about breaches. And where breaches appear in the text is as it relates to the Kohanim. And the Creator telling the Kohanim, telling Moshe to say, listen, tell them to put on breaches to cover their nakedness. Okay? When you look at, and I did it at another time, when you look at the priests of Egypt, and I could be mistaken, but they would wear these type of kilt type things. And whatever went on in their worship in their temple, the most I made sure it was totally opposite of what was going on in Egypt. So you may bow your head in Egypt, you grow your hair in Israel. You don't have a beard in Egypt, you got a beard in Israel. If you go up on your altar naked in Egypt, you're going to put on some clothes in Israel. So it's a con- it's a stark contrast between these cultures and the surrounding cultures. I say that to say, let me fast forward, that these breachers that are mentioned in the text are underwear. They're underwear. They're not something that is visible to the eye. There's many scriptures that speak about the skirt of a man's garment. And that the reality is if we want to talk about ancient culture, neither men nor women were walking around in pants. So if this is the case, and and please, if anybody's out there and can find me another text, I would gladly listen to hear what it is that you're saying. So if, if no one was walking around in pants, it's like saying, your panties or your underwear is something that someone would see. This is not something that anyone would see. And so if it's not something that anyone would see and it's not something that it particularly says, okay, men were the only one allowed to wear underwear and women weren't, then we have to reassess the scripture that we're talking about and how we're translating that to being the strong man's garment or the strong man's article only means pants. And this is what I want to introduce possibly to the conversation, that looking at it within that context, we have to kind of broaden the scope to understand that there's a possibility that it's not speaking of pants at all. So I'll give it to our brother Awal at this time, and then I'll come back around again to hear your thoughts on that. Have you done that story, I mean story, that study specifically, or are we just going off of what we may have heard and our interpretation in modern times? Brother Awal, the mic is yours. Right. Right. Um, see, here's the thing, right? Like pants, especially on a woman, it it contoured the shape of a body. And like around the fifties, even in this country, the fifties, the forties, the women used to wear dresses. And even when you go to the bathroom, the symbol of the female bathroom was the figure with the dress on. That's how they show the difference. Now, I want to read this. This is Isaiah. This is Isaiah 317. It says, Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown, the head of the daughters of Zion. That's one curse that was prophesied. And we teach dealing with, especially sisters, where their hair don't grow as long as the other nations. Right? Then it says, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. It first started out with them wearing pants. In the 50s and 40s, 
this America, they had pants. I mean, the women wearing dresses. Then it went into an evolution. Then they started with the pants. Then from pants went shorts, and the dresses got higher. Then it went to the evolution. Now that it, it, it went to the, uh, calling them uh, sun shorts or whatever. And now they wearing all manner of abominable things. So there's a prophecy also that speak of how everything's going to be converted back to the, the, the way the law wanted it. And this is this. This is Isaiah 4. It's in one. It says, and in that day, and in that day, seven women should take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. So it had to be a certain style or custom of apparel that the sisters started wearing in a massive level that was adverse to what the father's plan was, that they're going to have to convert back to their own apparel. So the question is, what is it that multitudes of sisters are doing that revert not to them wearing their apparel? What is it that is going to be converted back to them wearing their original apparel? And that's what I put on the table. Well, what is it? If it's not pants, then what is it? What is the apparel that's going to be converted back to their apparel? What's labeled their apparel? And I'm going to pass that. Pass the mic. All right. I'm going to come back. I'm going to, I'm going to note that because I have some thoughts, but I don't want to get too far off of my thought before I go to Sister Mayanna. I'll ask a question, yes. Brother Omar. When the scripture speaks of breaches, on that the command to give breaches to the priest mm. are those the pants that they are wearing today, or is that his underwear? I got to check it out. I'm not sure. You said you did right. a study and it was underwear. Well, if you look at if you Google right now, anybody who's next to their computer, Google. You know, a lot of people have tried to put together what the high priest. Like. Google the high priest. Or if you have a stone edition tonight, look at the front, you know, the pictures, the pictorials, and you will not see any representation. He's covered from head to feet, and you do not see any pants on him. Because it says, when we read the instructions, it says, have him to put this to cover his loins so that he doesn't he does discover his nakedness when he goes upon the altar. This is underwear. <laughs> And so this is what I know it sounds like, uh, you know, again, it's not even anything personal that this conversation is about. It's really just edification for us to, if we're going to convey this to someone, we can't mislead them to think that because they turned it into something in modern day, then that's what the scripture is referencing. And so when we look at Mikna Sayin, when we look at what the scripture is talking about and look at the context of it, it's underwear. Well, I'll let that matter oh, so once. Well, go ahead, me, brother. Yes, my question. So, so you're saying that when, in that scripture in Deuteronomy 22, when it said wearing anything that pertained to a man, you were saying you're saying that it was referencing underwear that the priest wore. No, what I'm saying is when asked earlier, and you brought up breaches, I wanted to make a differentiation okay. between the sort oh. of what say breaches are today and what the scripture is referencing as breaches. So this is why I'm uh, for clarity. And and again, if anybody has done the study, feel free to share for clarity. Breaches were underwear, like a level of boxing and Deuteronomy 22 and five. If we look at the language of Deuteronomy 22 and five, it leans more towards a strong man's or get bears article. And now the question would have to be, what would those articles be? What are those articles? If we're talking about men of war, men of war have articles. For instance, when David went among Saul, they gave him what? Strong man's gear. They tried to give him the shield and the sword, and it couldn't fit him. That's the articles of a strong man, his, his yes. weaponry. And this is why we, we see a difference in the language when it says don't put on a woman's garment, and then it says don't take a strong man's, basically. And I'm going to go ahead and get the actual thing. But I just wanted to put that out there if anybody's close to or interlinear or whatever the case may be, a proficient in the Hebrew so that we could kind of bring this out. And I'm not, I'm not saying personally, hey, go put on some tight-up pants and run up and down and do all kind of craziness. All I'm saying is that 
we we can be having this conversation, but um, but according to study, this Deuteronomy 22 and 5 does not substantiate uh, what is being said. Because if we say breaches, then most you're saying is, hey, girl, don't wear boxers. And most women wouldn't have a problem with that because they don't wear boxers <laughs> anyway. But I'm going to go mm-hmm. ahead and come. We're going to come back around. I'm going to go to Sister Mine and then come to Brother Mercy, check on Brother Shaw, see if anybody has their hands up in the air, and then we'll go from there. Um, hopefully we'll be able to lay a foundation and build. It's not a license to say, hey, do whatever you want to do. It's this really the conversation is about edification um, as it relates to the scriptures we use to substantiate what it is that we're trying to bring across. So, Sister Mayanna, Mike is right. So precisely, Sister, the, the, the reason for the conversation is to interrogate those things that we use for the edification. Again, we're not trying to advocate for women dressing immodestly, uh, immodestly or necessarily wearing pants. If, if women uh, are going to wear skirts and dresses and do so because they are adhering to modesty standards, and want to have a conversation with someone outside of the community, we want to make sure that they're not using uh, verses out of context because when you do that, it's too easy to refute them. When you know, or when you don't understand the context and someone else points out things that you have accepted without interrogation, then it just puts us in a bad position when we already have to find ourselves in conversations with outsiders about what we do in our community. So these conversations are to really interrogate the the, um, the verses used to edify certain customs and traditions. So um, it's, it's Exodus 28 and 4 gives a list of things that the priests were um, – were given to wear, how they were dressed. It was important that uh, Sister Amuna brought out that breeches, which is listed among, I don't think it's in this particular verse, but breeches that are listed as part of the the priest, the Kohanim's uh, garments, it's underwear. You know, it's, it's great that she brought that out because the description alone lets you know that they are a type of, of boxer briefs. They are. They don't go any further than your thigh. These these men who are who are hoarding the uh, ability to wear pants and saying this is our garment. This is what pertains to us. This is the evidence of our masculinity. These pants prove that I'm a man. Understand this. But if you were to ta- to time travel and, and use these verses and go before the priest in your pants, they would think that you are lewd and inappropriately dressed because the garment that they had that most closely resembles what you are wearing is underwear to them. So this idea of I'm going to claim pants, another thing about this, the differentiation between masculine and feminine wear, um, the idea that pants was the defining moment. The most high, this is, we're talking about Torah here. This is, this is what the most high, the distinction of the most high is placing between men and women. Did we really, or do we really want to say that the Most High waited for the European to design pants to establish the distinction that he's discussing in Torah. That the Most High did not have any way of doing this, and all the time they were walking around in Torah, all the time they were walking around in the early years of the Common Era, it wasn't until the European introduced pants to us that finally we were able to bring the Most High's uh, will into fruition because now we have a distinction between men and women. That's a search. It's a search for me. I don't know what's going on with the, the listening audience or what's going on in the social media world, but for me, that's absurd. When we look at, at Genesis, which is, you know, I like to be in Genesis. Genesis is where I'm comfortable. But we go to Genesis, and the Most High decides to make a garment for the people, or for, for, for um, Kava and Adam. It just says that he made a coat for them. That's it. There's no distinction in the language. I'm pretty sure he can still tell the difference between the men and the women. It says there's a coat. The language that we find here of, of the the coat, there's um, one that's baguette. There's one that's uh, similar. There's something else that it has a, a longer K. So I don't, I'll look it up for you guys later. But the, the, the one that begins with K is the one that we find, the coat, that we find in um, Genesis. It's the same word that we find when we're describing the, the garment that Tamar wore. Tamar, the daughter of Dawit. Same word. It is the same word that we find 
um, in Samuel. We were discussing what the men are wearing. What the women are wearing, the word is the same. They get the word is the same. What we're talking about, uh, the summer law, even that, the word is the same. The difference and the vibration has to do with what the how the women wore it, how the men wore it. Pants was not what, what uh, Moshe is talking about. It's not breeches. It's just, it, it's not some um, old word for it. And, and then a one part of something very interesting, and although he didn't say it himself, it has been said in other places, that when women began to wear pants, it's, a, it's part of the, the movement, specifically the feminist movement. Everybody loves the feminist movement. I personally don't like the feminist movement, but, uh, I'm not prepared to blame it for everything. Uh, the feminist movement is not when, and I'm going to go on the record as, as making sure you understand this, it's not when women started wearing pants. Women began to wear pants when men went off to war, or at least in mass, or, or, you know, more regularly. It's when they had to go and take the jobs of men because men were not in those seats. So to work in factories and long dresses was inconvenient, it's uncomfortable, and probably quite immodest to have to lift your skirts all the time while doing factory work. So that's when women started to wear pants. So if men are having a problem with women, because even um, our brother Mercy came in and he said, we're talking about authority, this idea that women start to wear pants. Okay, this does happen when when women start to have to work. When, when the the providing of the home shifts from the male to the female, then yes, women started to wear pants here. But then there are uh, there are artifacts from around 400 BCE where there's a, a I was a vase I believe that I saw a woman is wearing pants. So if you can't really blame the feminist movement wave one, wave two, or wave three. For pants, when we have vases from 400 BCE with women wearing pants. So I think that what's the more valuable conversation is discussing what our modesty concerns are, what our modesty standards are. If we want to talk about femininity, I think that we should do that. I think that if we want to have conversations about pants, then we need to use the appropriate versus, you know, or, or acknowledge the fact that there aren't any. Discuss what needs to be discussed and not to hang everything on, as, as Sister Muna spoke about earlier, our modern context. We're thinking about, you know, what happens when we walk into uh, Macy's today instead of what Moshe would have been looking at and talking about then. With that, I'll use the floor for now. All right, thank you for that. For those who have just joined us, we're having a conversation. Um, who wears the pants? And, again, as everyone is saying, sometimes, uh, you know, it's good to bring it all out because we are having different conversations, of course, from different points of view. Sister Marina just ended on a, a note of the question of modesty. And I think uh, when we have that question of modesty, when we try to look for our interpretation of text to substantiate that, and again, like she said earlier, it, that becomes a problem when you have thinkers and people who are seeking truth and dogmatic uh, explanations no longer serve them. And when they come to find out that, hey, you know what, this doesn't say this, as, as opposed to saying, listen, you know, we're supposed to be modest. Listen, we are supposed to carry ourselves as, as sons and daughters of the Most High. And instead of saying that, one looks for a misinterpretation of a text or are taught a misinterpretation of a text, it, it creates further division. And that's what we see continually. Again, some of this stuff has been passed down, and some of this stuff, because, you know, the thought is if it ain't broke, then I'm not going to fix it. If I have this control mechanism that's going to say, hey, women are not supposed to say pants, don't argue Deuteronomy 22 and 5. And the reality is if you go to Deuteronomy 22 and 5 and it doesn't say that, now if that person, the person's going to now think, oh, well, you're telling a lie, I'm going to go put on pants. And, again, not advocating for anyone to go and put on your tight up bike ride upon Sangadu Yadu. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, again, this text, like many other texts, have to come under the microscope. Um, What was I going to say before I went to Brother Mercy? So, again, you know, this is what's happening right now. Please don't confuse the purpose of this conversation. 
again, there's someone I saw put up something that what it would look like to gird your loins. For the most High to require of uh, the priests to basically gird their loins or cover their loins, one would have to ask the question, was their loins covered before? And how did they uh, navigate around, you know, the underwear question? Again, you don't see a lot of catalogs from biblical times, so you really wouldn't know what the thing looked like. But the concept of girding your loins is one that you would secure your family jewels, so to say. In fact, secure your manhood. Another question that comes into play is that if, if it is speaking, if someone brings up breaches, one would ask the question, are you saying that women didn't have underwear? So it gets very sticky if we, we stick around this breaches argument as opposed to expanding it and maybe looking at the possibility that these articles that we're speaking of, these things that pertain onto men, are not just a simla, a, a dress, which it says dress also for men, it just means garment, but in actuality it's things that would be associated with, like in today's time, um, guns. Uh, bulletproof vests, things that men went to go to war with, because yes, those things do carry spirit as well as clothes. Clothes carry spirit, and articles of war carry spirit as well. And so again, you know, I know some people probably never heard of this, or you have heard of it in passing, and you maybe don't understand it, so feel free to raise your hand. We're going to come to Brother Mercy, and then we're going to go to the crowd, uh, the, the listeners, the crowd, I said the listeners. So Brother Mercy, your thoughts? Yeah, uh, I would like to say that when I first heard the topic of this discussion, the topic of discussion raises more than just the, the 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 materials of the discussion. The material discussion is pants, but when I first saw the women wear the pants, it don't mean that. It it it, it has a a, a, a connotative uh, how should I say a connotative meaning behind it. What do I mean by that? Well, we talked about past. We talked about men providing for the family, men not providing for the family. We talked about should men be entitled to a wife if he if he if he's not a good husband, he's not providing for the family. And then you come up with should women wear the pants in that context? It means should women take over? That's where I'm saying it. Maybe we're not saying it the same way, but in the context of the discussions we've had. I think the pants take a connotative meaning. It don't just mean just pants. It means, especially in this culture, and if we go to the scriptures, we know we're not going to find those scriptures to justify this nonsense because the men wore skirts. So we already know this. If you go to foreign countries, like in Scotland, the men wore, wear skirts. So I think it, we need to stay with the text. And what the text says in Torah, the articles or the clothing pertaining to a man, we can't really – Specify what clothing that is because that depends on the culture and that depends on the geographic location where you're located. They, like I said, you have pants that are made specifically for women, and you got pants made specifically for men. So in that case, if I just say, "Can women wear the pants?" Yeah, you can wear female pants, sure, but you shouldn't wear man pants. That's how I see it. If you go to Macy's, if we take it in today's context, now that's not scriptural. But then if you want to talk about what happened in the 50s and 60s, let's talk about the civil rights. We can talk about the civil rights movement and all that. So all of that, I mean, looking at people, how they dress, and looking at how this system of government has oppressed our people, why are we looking at them as a model, which I don't understand? I mean, the people in Israel or the Hebrew culture, they weren't wearing pants. They were wearing uh, robes and so forth and that nature. So uh, – I think it that that means more to me than the pants because the pants take on a European. I think we got to look at the European and why they did it and what they did it for. But I think we look at scripture, which is ancient ancient culture and ancient tradition and Hebrew culture, Hebrew tradition and Israeli culture, and Israeli tradition. If we look at it from that perspective, then we would have to say then that the pants is a non-issue. What is the issue is what clothing belongs to a man, or what articles belong to men, and what articles belong to women, and those articles should pertain. I mean, cause we, we can go further this pain. We can go makeup, or we can go lipstick. Do men should men wear lipstick? Well, probably not, you know. But I'm just saying th- th- that whole context, because the lipstick means kind of like means that you're a female to, to to many people in this culture. So I think it's, it's about what it means more so. Than the clothing itself, 
because uh, I think the law has a spiritual application. It has a spiritual application because we can't just say pants only pertains to warfare because women now are in the military and women now are soldiers in the military and they're fighting. So men are not only just fighting no more. It used to be just men fighting, but now we got women and men fighting. So, you know, it's that context in there. But, yeah, I wanted to ask the panelists what they think about this. What do they think about so women only wear women pants? What do you think about that? That's all I want to say. Thank you. That was the voice of Brother Mercy. You brought up some very, very interesting points, Brother Mercy, uh, and one that, you know, oftentimes this is why we usually spend the first hour or so just get everybody getting on the same level because, again, we're coming from different perspectives. Uh, I like to kind of like in Israel to all age school, everybody coming from different perspectives, different levels, different thoughts. And one would, it, you know, it's, it's easy to assume that we're all on the same uh, coming from the same perspective, like you said, well, it's apparent. But then on a, a, someone else would say, no, okay, it says men's clothes, and so they time travel to today and say men wear pants today, so women shouldn't wear pants today. Do you understand? And so it takes a little time for us to clear that out. And then, you again, you brought up what would be alterations within the garment that would indicate if it was a male's garment or a female's garment. For instance, as you did indicate that female pants, some of them have the zipper at the back. So the argument of a zipper would be mute unless you're going to be peeing from behind or to the side. So this is where it comes problematic and, 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 you know, hairy. Like, as you said, speaking of female pants, then for clarity, the question is, is it talking about pants? Why is it very important? Because this is one of the scriptures that is used more heavily on the woman as opposed to the man. And because it ends in all who do these things as an abomination, this is another scare tactic, not from what the Torah is saying, but the way in which it's being used. This is another tactic of which to control the mind and not critically investigate what is being said um, as the text reads out. And so because this is one of those texts that, you know, people automatically go to to say, hey, this is why you're out of line, because women shouldn't wear pants. See, it says it right here. Uh, I think it's interesting. I do understand what you're saying as it relates to the way in which we've been having the conversation. And truthfully, myself personally, when we thought about this topic, it wasn't even all the way on that level as yet, because just on a base level, this seems to be a question in the community. I do remember uh, with hearing the information from Ben Ami's community, one of the this is the very same thing that happened. In the beginning it was the thought women shouldn't wear pants. And then they came or good whether they revisited and then it changed to say you can wear women's pants. And some people still go and see and I myself went over there and interfaced with them and, and then they're like, you know, women can wear pants. And so for myself, coming from where I come from, I'm like, hmm <laughs> you know, and you know, it, but again, they're wearing things that pertain on to them. I I can't foresee a man having on those pants that she has on. So the thought is, it's not even on a high level right now. So hopefully, I address your question as it relates to women's pants. If a man had a, a zipper in the back, that would definitely be a problem. Or if his zipper was on the side, that kind of defeats the purpose. So uh, it wasn't even on that level, brother Mercy. But I definitely see your point, and we can hopefully probably touch that point a little bit. But what we're just talking about is the basics. Clothing for us is a big issue. It's a big issue. We're very attached to the things we put on. We've, we often feel very indifferent about being told what we can and cannot do. Um, that seems to be a problem, one of the biggest problems, and it seems like it should be an easy matter. But when you move amongst Israel, it definitely is not. When you see some people, you, you scratch your head and, and you wonder, you know, are you reading? <laughs> and if you are reading, you obviously are making another choice. And so I know it seems small and minute, but when you when you show up to work, and I'm going to come to Brother Sal, when you show up to work and you have a dress code, and that dress code specifically says no flip-flops, no hats, and no tank tops, and you show up in any one of those, then you might easily go back home. Well, when we show up as children or servants of the Most High, and, again, you know, I used to work at a place, if you don't have your name tag, you're not ready to work. But we, we seem to think that if we are, have that much, so much respect for men, but when it comes into entering into the presence or showing up to say, hey, I represent the Creator, we don't take that much care. And so, again, I know it sounds minute, but the Most High took a lot of time dressing his high priest, Aharon, 
down to the drawers. And so I think it's worth looking into, and I thank you guys for bearing with me. Brother Sal, are you there? Do we have any hands in the air? Feel free to let um, them speak at this time. All right, people. I see we have a lot of people listening to the show via phone or via Skype. I see we have a lot of Skypers listening to the show tonight and people on social media. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. And shout-out to the people that are sharing the show right about now on their personal page. I see you guys sharing it, and thank you once again. We want to hear from you guys. The number is 319-527-6239. I saw earlier as the conversation was progressing, a few people pressed number one, but I guess uh, maybe they uh, press number one again. If you press one, just press it one time, and that's going to keep you on the queue. If you press it more than once, it's going to take you off the queue. So if you have a question or a comment, you can press number one, and we'll add you in the conversation. But as of now, Amuna, uh, there's nobody on the panel uh, pressing number one right now. But, uh, Mayana, I know you said earlier that you had some um, activity on social media that you wanted to relate to the people out there. Uh, do you want to um, go into that right now? What are some of the comments that were made on social media? Yeah. Well, sure. There was We did a poll asking what the people thought about the topic and what the consensus was regarding whether or not women, uh, whether or not the Bible has a prohibition against women wearing pants. The poll results show that overwhelmingly the consensus is that the Bible does not have a prohibition against women wearing pants with only one person believing that it did. Um, the conversations that I have on my side, I don't know what you guys can see it's different pockets of social media response, but the question was there's a lot of confusion. Some people just didn't know because of the fact that we have so many different doctrines that are being recycled and repeated and, and kind of distributed throughout the community that it has caused some confusion. So I get several assurances that we would do our very best to kind of parse through all of the possible arguments on both sides or whatever, on all sides regarding the topic. And I think we're doing a pretty good job so far. Um, but that's what the results are out there. I'd like to kind of piggyback a little bit on what Sister Mona brought out and try to also answer a little bit of, of what Brother Mercy brought out. Sister Mona brought up the issue of the zipper which is another argument that is often presented the idea that a zipper uh, on, a, uh, on the pants is evidence of the male garment. But there are zippers on skirts. I, I, I don't know if it's because men don't wear skirts and they thought that was a great argument, but any woman who's had a skirt will testify that there are zippers on skirts. It's not a, a unique invention that is only employed by the men. There are zippers on boots. I mean, there are zippers on everything. So the idea that the zipper uh, somehow cinches the masculine argument, obviously it does not. Uh, as Sister Mona pointed out, uh, the way pants are created, in some instances, it is very clear that this is a woman's garment. Wide legs, very flowy material, and so sometimes so wide legs that you don't know that they're pants until she is in motion because they look like they could easily be skirts. To address the idea of how language has caused um, some kind of indication, connotation, or stigma, the, the, it's kind of putting the horse before the cart, the cart before the horse, forgive me with, with that uh, colloquialism. Uh, these things, the idea of what came first, did this, did this did the saying of the woman wears the pants come before or after? The idea that women wearing the pants has to do again with who is providing. Women who wore pants were usually women who went to work and were in this providing role. The fact is the provider is the person of authority. One of the things that comes with this idea of authority, there's a bundle. This idea that you're providing for your household. Men love authority. Love being the authority figure and get really quiet, a little bit small when we start discussing provision, protection. What are you going to do? How? What? What, what are the? What are the articles of, of authority? Other than you bringing your masculinity to the table, the white chromosome is all you want to offer the, the family structure. Wearing the pants was usually it meant that you worked somewhere. 
It's just a board of uniforms. So this is this is what we are discussing. So if we want to really have a problem with the saying and the and the connotation, then we have to address the other issues, probably not in this form. We'll have another form to properly do so. But we have to deal with the fact that the, the onus of provision has moved. Who is providing? When we, when we want to talk about the numbers and we want to talk about what statistics show, and we want to have an attitude about the fact that most households are being headed by women. So if you really don't want her to wear the pants, if you really don't, if you really want to have an issue with this this uh, saying applying to her, then take that burden off her back. But she is not supposed to be the one provide. She's the one. If you don't want her to be seen as having that type of authority, then she shouldn't have that type of burden. Now, in terms of talking about it according to scripture, which is what we were talking about, and why we're having this conversation is not because we don't understand. That, that the larger social context has to do with women uh, occupying spaces that they didn't traditionally hold, particularly in our Hebrew culture. But instead, it is because there's so much doctrine and so much conversation uh, using so much erroneous information that it is irresponsible of us not to address it. Exodus doesn't mean that. Ezekiel doesn't mean that. Isaiah doesn't mean that. Deuteronomy doesn't mean that. Stop using that because we are, are are sending our people out into into war when we're talking about and we have them ill equipped. They don't have the weapons or the tools of, of the of the of the strong man. They're out there with, with tin with tin swords, tin swords. They're ill equipped to have these conversations because they have bad information, misinformation, disinformation, and a lot of it is deliberate. Discuss femininity, let's do that. If we want to discuss modesty, let's do that. But we do not want to give out bad information to the people. And as just someone that said, I think this is important, there's a lot of this disinformation that is being disseminated is because there is this push to control, to manipulate, to, to invoke fear in the women. This idea we we have to we have to corral you because we cannot control you. We're going to scare you with Torah. We're going to villainize everything that you do. And that's not appropriate. And when we do that, when we when we disarm our, our women, we take away half of our defense. Half of our defense system is our sisters. I don't know why the brothers have done that, but I think that it has to be corrected, and someone should do it honestly. And so if we're going to become a nation that wants to engage in nation building in earnest, then we have to be diligent, we have to be honest, and we have to be intelligent about the arguments that we construct. With that, I yield the floor. Right now. Yeah, before we uh, continue with the dialogue, I uh, just want to let you know, Amuna, Amuna, we do have uh, people standing by, so whenever you're ready for the calls, let me know. All right, then. We got some calls standing by. Sister Mayana getting turned up on the on the second part of the conversation, but definitely, 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 uh, you know, may we listen and may we take heed to many of the things that Sister Mayana just said as it relates to it's time to step up the game because, <laughs> It's not working, you know, um, and we have to be honest. And, again, Moshe gave choice. What's happening here, and then we're going to come to the line as I uh, I, I give some facts on something I, I said earlier. We, Moshe gave choice. He said this and this. And then he said, blessing and curses before you this day, you choose. And what is happening is that people are choosing for you. And when people are choosing for you, when you wake up and you want to rebel, instead of rebelling against miscellaneous doctrine or erroneous doctrine, you rebel against the creator. Because you, in your mind, I'm seeing this a lot, a lot. It's happening a whole lot these days, men and women, because they were misinformed. And they took the person who told them in the stead of the creator. Now when they rebel against, they're rebelling against Torah. Because now they have lost 
faith in what has been said because it has been misrepresented. And that's what's called leading the people astray. And for us, as people will say, oh, what are women talking now? For the feminine principle to have to be like, hey, oh, 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 whoa, come on now, we got to do better. We already know that. Because that is our job. Our job is to is co-pilot. We look and we see stuff is going like, okay, now let's take a look at this. Because, again, we're losing people because you're robbing them of choice. This is not about forcing anyone to worship the creator, true and living power. This is about presenting truth, and the people have to make the choice. Um, I got a quick question real quick. Quickly, and I'm going to come back to Brother Sal. One second. Exodus 28 and 42. I think Mayana went there, but I'm going to just quickly read these two verses so that you can see it's underwear as it relates to the breaches. Um, 41 says, You shall put them on Aaron, your brother, and on his sons with him, and you shall anoint them and ordain them and consecrate them that they may serve me as priests. You shall make for them linen breaches to cover their bare flesh. They shall reach from the loins even to the thigh. So if you can picture something that's covering your loins unto your thighs, that looks a lot like boxer briefs because it's on. It's the closest thing to their body, which would mean that it's undergarments. So, but with that, I just wanted to substantiate what was being said. So it was not these sisters is making stuff up. Now that's Exodus twenty-eight forty-two, brother Sal to Michael. Yeah, I believe one of the gentlemen wanted to say something before I go to the people yeah. uh, who wanted to say something. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, this, this, this is the war. Um, so I just got a question for you, too. You, you know the ninja outfits the Muslim women be wearing, right? Do y'all have a problem with that? Because I, I think that's hot. <laughs> you know <laughs> the ninja outfit? Are you talking about the birthdays? With the, okay, I think that we established that the opening, that we don't have oh. a problem. With with the modest garment, we have no problem with uh, in the case of the burqa, with the flowing garment, the skirts, the dresses. We have no issue with that. What we're actually doing at the moment is looking at the conversation and saying, if we're going to have a conversation about modesty, if we're going to have a conversation about femininity, let's be honest and let's use the appropriate precepts. You cannot decide, oh, this looks good, oh, that sounds good. Let's patchwork it together and feed it to the women. We're not telling the women to go and be immodest. You can be immodest in, in skirts. I don't know if you've seen these skirts that so many people are wearing, but that's immodest. If the skirt is too tight, it doesn't matter that it's a skirt. If we're going to discuss modesty, we should discuss modesty. If we're going to discuss femininity, let's discuss femininity. But let's not start talking about pants because that is the that, that's the extent of our frame of reference. Well, can I say that? Like, what, can I, mean, can I, I say, say something like, after, him, after him? Yeah. Is is there a is there a code for a married woman and a single woman? Like, is this you know? Are you asking if we color code our uniform? Are you asking if we color code our clothing based on whether our marital status? I think that's another thing that's very important. No, no, I'm talking about like as in the modest part, as you know, like a a married woman should cover. Women are supposed to be, the most fact that you say that if you're unmarried, your modesty standards are different from those women that are modest, the, the women that are married. I think that this is what is very problematic in our, in our community, the idea that women are defined according to their marital status. It doesn't matter. The most, first and foremost, women are the daughters of the most high. And if the most high says, I want my daughter to look this way, that is what it is. And it's not depending upon whether or not she's with you and what she wears. She's the daughter of the most high, and the most high place a standard for, his, for the women of, uh, you know, of this nation. The idea that that somehow changes when she, due to her proximity to a man or whether or not she marries a man, we really have to stop trying to define these women according to whether or not you know, they are claimed by a particular man or whatever her marital status. I think it's a very interesting but problematic question. The the idea of modesty, the idea of femininity is uh, guided or informed by the fact that the Most High has a status for the women, period. I want to put a period there. I don't want to put a comma or a classification or it is not parenthetical. It is because the Most High said, you are my daughters, and this is how you are going to look. All of the time, no matter where you are in the world, and 
before I go, and I'm going, I know we have people in the audience. I know that my brother Mercy wants to speak, and oh, well, you probably have more to add. I'm going to say this before I yield the mic. When we look at the article of clothing that the Most High gave to the Kohanim, to, to the priests, as Sister Mona stated, he put great thought and detail into every single one of those articles. And you know what? It's very interesting to see the certain men cleave to the word breeches. There's also the word bonnet. And there's also the word apron. Are we not allowed to cover our heads and wear aprons either because men somewhere wore them? I mean, you, you cannot decide that you can pick and choose which article fits the agenda or fits the conversation. Those same verses refer to several other articles. If you're going to if you're going to go to that first and say you cannot do this because the men did it, you cannot stop at article number one. You have to read the whole thing. There's a whole catalog there. Now let's talk about the strip women of their underwear, strip them of their bonnets, strip them of their aprons. What do you, I mean, just because a man wore them. And understand this, it's not just any man. Again, we're talking about the priest. In Deuteronomy, we're talking about the strong man. The scriptures are being specific, but with Torah is being specific, why are you so general? Not you necessarily. Well, I mean in general. This is the general you. Why is there so much generality with the specificity in Torah? But why are you for sure? I would love to hear the feedback. All right. Yeah, hello? That, oh. yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we are here. The, the call is all, all standing by. Mayana threw that question out, so I think Brother Mercy was next. Uh, Brother Mercy, you could you could say your piece, and we're gonna we're gonna touch on the audience and hear what's what's popping over there. So, Brother Mercy, the mic is yours. Yeah, I wanted to say too that uh, I wanted to touch on this culture thing because this is so important because culture is very important. Like for example, if the word gay, for example, the word gay for many centuries meant happy for many centuries, but in recent history, gay has taken on another meaning. So, if I wanted to say I was happy. I would just say I'm happy. I wouldn't say I'm gay. Now, if I say I'm gay and I'm meaning happy, that, that would confuse the audience, right? Because the audience say, well, he's homosexual. See what I'm saying? So you see how culture affects your communication, and it affects. So I want to communicate things, whether it's in clothing or whatever, because I want to make sure that people understand the message, because we, we don't want to send a, 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 a you know, because we're, we're trying to hold to the culture, to ancient culture, and then we send a confusing message out there. So I wanted to say one thing. I know in ancient culture, like we got today, we got people that are married today. For example, let's touch on the marriage real quick. People wear rings in this culture. People wear rings on their finger when they're married. So I'm pretty sure in ancient culture, they had something to signify whether or not they was married. It goes to a wall's point. Because I'm pretty sure men could look at women and say, this woman is married, this woman is not married. Because you need something to signify and identify. And the reason why I say that, because men need to know who's married and who's not married. Because if you see women walking the street, you know which one. And I think it wasn't so much the dress or the pants. I think it might have been the, the head cover, the, the, the heading or the, the, the you know, the, the covering, the uh, veil or something. It might have been something of that nature, a veil or something like that. But I'm pretty sure if you go to the Middle East, the women dressed that are married dress a certain way and the women that are not just a certain way. And that's just so people would know who's married and who's not. That's just to, for communication purposes. Because we, 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 we don't want a man walking to a married, married woman not know, and you talk to a married woman, you know she's married. You know what I'm saying? Over here we have the ring to, to identify that. So I think going to a war's point, there needs to be some type of identification. Not to put you in the bondage, but to, but to say, okay, I'm taking, I'm claimed, and this is the proof right here. I'm, I'm wearing this to prove that and this is not to say you can't wear something else. That's not to say that, but it's saying that to so that the world would know that uh, you're claimed already. And I think that's key and that's important because most cultures that you go to, the women that are married, there's a way you can identify the women that are married and the way that uh, that women are not married. So I think that's important, whatever that is. I mean, I don't know what that would be today, but most people in this country, in this culture, wear a ring to identify themselves as being married. So that has nothing to do with the past. But there's still a way to identify. That's all I want to say. All right. Thank you for that, Brother Mercy. We're going to revisit. We're going to revisit. Again, the topic is who wears the pants. Um, right now, I think, you know, sometimes with men and women, we it's good, the relationship challenge. We have a conversation. But sometimes we either miss the point or we don't. 
we don't acknowledge what the other person is saying. And this happens in man and woman relationship. It happens in communities. It happens all the time. And for some reason, I'm not receiving. I'm going to come to Brother Sado that what is being understood, what is, what the, why the point is being driven home is that what is being used to express a concern about modesty has the possibility of being used out of context. And if so, then the word is being added to, and the individuals who are doing this are in error. And so that is really the first part of what uh, myself and Sister Mayana is trying to bring out, that this text, while we're harping on the conversation of pants, is because that is the only thing that is being uh, uh, attributed to the man. And as Sister Mayana rightly said in the Exodus, when you're reading about the priest's clothes, a whole lot of other things are attributed. And to just cherry pick or to just, you know, act like it's a bag of checks mix and I, I, I like peanuts but I don't like almonds, you know, that's problematic. And that's something that we are troubled with as a nation and definitely we have to take a look at it. But um brother brother Sal, the mic is yours and the phone lines are open. All right, so we're going to go to the people right now. We have a lot of people checking out the show. And like I said, I always appreciate the people, listeners out there that tune in. Feel free to call in. The number is 319-527-6239. Again, feel free to call in. Don't be shy. Let your voice be heard. And the show is archived for those people that are first-time callers. You can always go back and check it out. Go to www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash debate talk for you. Or go to the iTunes podcast. Yes, we're on iTunes. Absolutely free. The podcast section. Check us out. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, uh, Facebook, of course, all social media. But let's go to the listeners out there. For the first time, callers, only rule that I have is that there's no foul language. you got to keep it clean, keep it professional when you're calling in. Uh, again, just press number one, I will add you in. Let's go to the first caller, though. Let's go to 704-923. You're live in the air. Hey, Sal, this is David. Hey, what's going on, Dave? How you doing? Uh, I'm good. Listen, I'm in a noisy area, so I'm going to just make a point, and then I'll mute you again and listen in. Um, I was on the fence with regards to ladies wearing pants before, but what got me off the fence was recently when Jada Pickett and Will Smith's son started wearing dress. And I just, I just didn't like that, and then I realized some of the athletes was, and, and entertainers were doing the same thing. So I'd like the panel... Um, a feeling and, and these guys wearing dress. And I'm on mute you and listen. Right. Um, I'll go first. Uh, that's why I, I like this, that, that part where it says pertaineth, right? When, when I'm reading here, the origin, you have to go back to who created pants, you know, the origin of pants. And when they were made, it's right here, it says this. This is on the internet. It says, pants were wearing, uh, pants wearing became an everyday affair in Europe during the 8th century after the fall of Rome, Roman Empire, when the continent fell under the rule of warriors who fought from horseback, the knights. Then it says, so wearing pants became associated with high-status men, gradually spread to other males. So what I'm saying is, if that originated with men, and then the scriptures say, don't wear nothing that pertains to a man. That's where I feel it becomes abomination. Like, if a man wear a dress, pertain, I mean, or a woman, anything that pertains to a woman, a bra, anything that women are known for wearing, then it becomes an abomination. It pertains to a woman. Whatever pertains to what a woman do. If I, put, if I come in there and wear makeup, that's an abomination. Because that pertains to a woman. I mean, not in our time, but in this society, that's what it say. Or, or uh, when, like when you go into Isaiah 3, you give a whole illustration on what sisters wore. Uh, they had uh, 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 things on their feet, like little tinkling ornaments. Now, if I come in there with a tinkling ornament on my leg, you'll look at me crazy because that pertained to a woman. So that's what it round off to, to me. If it pertained to a woman, it was made for a woman, or a woman created it, then it can be abominations of man with, or vice versa. I'm going to pass the mic. Brother O'War, <laughs> these same these same men that are wearing pants that you quoted in England, were they wearing wigs too? Yeah. Mhm, mhm. So then, <laughs> women wearing wigs—that means women wearing wigs is an abomination. Oh, and these same men were they in stockings? 
And did they wear high heel shoes? Do you see why why when we when we're having this conversation and we again well like we're looking at the fact that it wasn't just one thing? These men also when you look at some of these men, they were in some stockings and some high heel shoes. Right. Right. So right. how do we get to only say, Yes, it is only pants alone that man wear? When the reality is well, these dudes are in makeup and wigs. We're high heel shoes. Well, like, but, and, and, right. and, and so what I'm saying is Again, my my impetus is not – I don't wear – personally, people might say, so, Muna, where you wear? I don't wear pants. However, oh. I do not – once I was aware, this is years ago, that this mm-hmm. scripture is not speaking of that, then I cannot present it to someone as that. Now, the person, again, like Mayana said, if we want to have a conversation about modesty, you could be immodest in a skin-tight dress. When you talk about pants and a man and all like these tight pants with the youth that is wearing now and all of his reproductive organs are printed out, that is immodest. That is, mm. and even he's in pants. That's a man's quote-unquote garment. But his pants is not even covering his loins or his shirt is not covering his loins. And everything is exposed. That also is immodest. So we're talking about specifically can we use Deuteronomy only to say pants when there are so many other things that men and women wore collectively? And is pants the only defining thing that is men only? Because Chinese, they speak of China. Before the European, China also, when you look at the history of it, were wearing uh, what looked like, you know, the loose-fitting things, harems in the Middle East. That's why they call them harem pants. They look like skirts, but they only they only go around the ankles, you know, the little MC Hammer-looking stuff. So you, we get into all of this historical stuff, and if we're going to go to one point in history, someone else's history, by the way, you know what I'm saying? It's not even our history, you know, following the ways of the nations. If we're going to go into other people's history, then we can't just, you know, pick one little point in their history that we want to say, see, here it is. We have to look at it in its fullness to be fair and allow other people to make their choice and not feel as that the choice is being uh, made for them. You know, blessing and curses before you this day, you choose. But with that, I will link us to Mike. Anybody else have something to say on that question, feel free to do so. I would like to go back to the fact that, again, uh, Awar is emphasizing this word pertain that doesn't exist in the human text. It's not there. This idea of pertaining. Instead, when we look at uh, in the Hebrew, the word higher is there, meaning to be or to become. Uh, using the tools of a strong man. So, this wearing, not there. Garment, not there. And pertaining, not there. So again, to to hang the argument on something that is not there. It is very bad practice that so many of our people have begun to embrace and we, we recycle bad rhetoric and create um, environments where we can't sustain a conversation with outsiders because we have so much bad information and we are using that information to substantiate really good things. Modesty is a great thing. Femininity is an amazing thing. But you cannot use that information to substantiate all of these good things. Instead, we have to use good information. We have to use the appropriate precepts. Deuteronomy is not going to work for you. Exodus is not going to work for you. You cannot so use them. They are not talking about them. What is your question? My question to you is, is there anything that are is that is specifically made for women that pertain to a woman, and if it is, is it okay for me to wear? Is it okay to, for me to walk around in some high heel pumps? So that's what you're saying. Does it matter if I wear high heel pumps? The scripture is talking about sandals. It's not talking about high heel pumps. To answer no, I'm your asking question, a question. Would, let me finish. To answer your question, if it were to be based on your previous argument, then according to your logic, yes, because you said the European created the pants for whatever reason. The same European wore stockings. No, I didn't finish my statement when she came in. Excuse me? Yes, your I argument said, was no, I didn't European finish when she came in. I didn't finish my statement. The heel what I was saying was, to the male. Mm. Now, this is what I was going to say. Oh, when I, you read it, most heathen nations were into that, wearing the pants. The women wore pants, Okay. 
Now, what I was saying was, we that's why I said we had to find out was the origin, where did the origin of pants actually come from? Did it come from us or from them? And if it did, who was it made by, male or female? And then okay. we can get, so, but you're saying, you're saying in the Torah that pertainus is not there, right? That's what you just Correct. said. Correct. The word pertainus is not there in that verse. Because so it's, it's not, higher. So, to be or so to be like to wear something that pertains to a woman. That's what you said. Why are you co- okay? By all means, explain that leap in logic. All I said to you was Deuteronomy, the twenty-second chapter, the fifth verse does not say the word pertain. Neither does it have the word word. Uh, where what it says in that space is higher to be or to become, and it says to um, and where God has the word kill, which means tools or articles. So. I'm not saying anything. What if, if you want to wear heels and stockings, well, you know, don't put me into that conversation. And I, at no point did I imply. I just want to know if it's lawful. You said we got to. Do you think it's wrong to wear heels? Yeah. If you're going to wear a woman's style, I wouldn't buy my son a pair of girl heels. You should not wear a woman's style shoe. Uh, excuse me, I'm pretty sure if you own a pair of Timberlands, there's a heel to it. Correct. Yeah, I think that's the main thing. Books all have heels. Excuse me. I think you, answer you, would, it, you would be hard pressed to buy a workman's boot that did not have a heel. You would be hard pressed to find a good uh, uh, Sunday shoe. What do they call, they call them? Sunday shoes. Uh, what a dress shoe that didn't have a heel. The difference is the difference between a, a woman's shoe heel and a man's shoe heel. So even if you want to use the argument of heels and shoes in a modern context. If you go to a store to buy a man's shoe, you will find a heel. But would it be the same heel as a female shoe? Absolutely not. However, if you want to go back to what the heel was created for and to whom it pertained originally, a moon's argument stands. Originally, stockings were for men, so that makes Let's it a man's a garment, according to your conversation, pardon. Let's try a pardon? bra. What about a bra? What about a bra? Do you have breasts? <laughs> this is good. If you don't now have breasts, saying, you don't need a bra. That pertains to a woman. Are you saying that it's okay for a man to wear a woman's It pertains to breasts. Excuse me. The bra pertains to breasts. Everybody who has breasts should wear a bra, unless you want your breast at your stomach. If you don't have breasts, you don't have to concern yourself with that. I don't wear a cast. Why? Because my arm doesn't need a cast. You don't wear a bra because you don't need a bra. Period. However, women do need to cover their their lower extremities. It's not the same. And if you want to talk about skirts, the entire scripture talks about skirts. The, the caller talks about skirts. Now, let me ask you the caller, unless you have something else that you want to ask me. No, right. Okay, so let's talk about skirts. In scripture, there's plenty of skirts. Men are wearing skirts. So there's no conversation at all about women wearing skirts, not one. All of the men are wearing skirts. And, in fact, the Most High describes in Ezekiel how he spread his skirt. Over, the, uh, over his bike, who he found soiled in her own blood. He covered her with his skirt. Boaz is, is pleaded to cover Ruth with his skirt. This conversation of skirts, this is the property of a man. This is what pertains to a man. So instead of defending your ability to wear pants, you really ought to, you know, we could have conversations in, in Scripture about your ability to wear skirts. Now, as far as uh, Jaden Smith, for example, what Jaden Smith is wearing is a woman's garment. He is not in any way trying to wear something that pertains to a man. We saw who is this model? Tyrese is it Tyrese that's the model. I was confused with the two uh, young men. One is a single, one is a model. I believe Tyrese is the. It's about uh, it's about uh, Tyson. 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 Sorry. Tyson. 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 Tyrese. I confused for one time. Thank you, brother, for that. A seen in the airport wearing a long flowing tunic. Obviously, there's no confusion that that was a man wearing a tunic. No one is thinking, wow, look at him in, in, a, in a dress. No one thought that. Everyone thought, wow, that is definitely a man in a tunic. So that is the difference between what Jaden Smith is doing. Jaden Smith makes this declaration of he wants to be sexually ambiguous and sexually free and all this other nonsense. That's what he want, he he sought out to do. Are we telling the men to go and, and dress as women? Absolutely not. But would you then say that Boaz was dressing as a woman? Would you then say when the Mosai said he is going to, to spread his foot, is he talking as a woman to another woman? Of course not. 
again, context, intelligence. These are, these are conversations that we have to um, have as adults. This is an adult conversation. Clearly, there's a distinction between what the men are wearing and what the women are wearing, and the, and the context at the time they understood it. The same language for the same words are used, whether it's for a, bo- a male or a female. But that does not mean that there was no distinction between the garments, even though the, the, the same word. No one's saying dress and pants and Torah. The same thing again, some of that. And, and this is a very complicated K word that I can't uh, properly say, so I won't mispronounce it. But it's the word coat. When we see in scripture, the most time we coat. The, the people are wearing coats. The, the daughter had a coat. This is all, the, everyone is using the same word. But I'm positive, I'm, I'm willing to, to say that in this context, although the word was the same, that people understood the distinctions. No, no one was thinking, no one was confusing gender roles based on what the garments were because garments had to have had those distinctions. So the point that uh, Brother Mercy clarified, and I appreciate you clarifying a word earlier, question in terms of uh, what may have been different. Many conversations would state that between unmarried and married women, there was the head covering because of numbers five. We see that every, whenever there's confusion about whether or not women should cover their heads, uh, most uniformly, the uh, consensus is married women definitely covered their heads, even if unmarried women did not, because number five shows that a woman who was accused of adultery immediately she became uncovered. So in order to you, for you to uncover a woman, she would have had to have had her head covered in order for a priest to uncover her head and bring this kind of dishonor upon her. So the married woman would more likely have been covered uh, although there are others that would say all of us are covered all of the time, but uniformly, most unanimously, the community would say that mostly married women would definitely have had their head covered and shown that type of distinction in their um, in their in their garments. Uh, so, with that, I'm I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I yield the floor. Yeah, right. can I say something real quick? <laughs> We're gonna come to you, Brother Mercy. Definitely, Brother Sal. Uh, we have Sister Sarai on the line. She hit me up on, on social media, so look for a 404 number, as well as anyone else who may have their hand in the air. It's definitely getting hot. <laughs> now, again, like I said, it's a conversation that gets people. It seems simple, but, you know, it, it translates so differently to everyone's life that um, people seem to turn up for it. So, Brother Mercy, the mic is yours, and then we're going to come to the phone line. Brother Mercy, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to say real quick that, where do we get this idea of women not I mean women not wearing pants? Let's be honest. Let's be honest, black people, okay? We got that from the black church that most of them were uneducated. And most of black people don't read at the grade level they supposed to read. I'm a teacher side so notice. So most people are uneducated. So first of all, since most people are uneducated, they can't read so right. That's number one. So let's just go ahead and knock that out already. So whatever the preachers say, that's what it is. And so the thing is, what you got to understand, we got to look at where it came from. Where the source of that? The source is from that black preacher that got in front of that black church and told the black congregation that women could wear pants. That's where it came from. So let's be honest where it really came from. So when we talk about women not wearing pants, but then we got to talk about what does wearing the pants mean? Because I don't think we're just talking about clothing. Like, he's going back to this point. That should I think women should wear the pants? In today's meaning of what that means and the connotative meanings of that, should women run mm-hmm. the home? Should women be the provider home? Now, is that what wearing the pants means? Because that's what it means to a lot of people. If you go out here and say, should women wear the pants, people are not thinking about necessarily just the pants. They're thinking about she's the provider, she's the head of the home. So if we, right. add, those meanings to it, if we add those meanings to it, then my answer will change. I'll be like, well, if wearing the pants means this, then my answer would be no. But just simply wearing the pants, no, because if you look at Romans chapter 7, verse 14, it talks about the law is spiritual. And so we got to understand about the Torah is spiritual. It's not just a natural uh, material meaning. It has, it, it sends a message. The woman wearing the pants, does that send a message to anybody? Does that say anything? If I say I'm gay, gay means happy. Look up this, it means happy. But what does it mean to the person I'm talking to? It means I'm homosexual. So I wouldn't say I'm gay. And you see, I have to change the way I communicate so that the people can understand the message. 
You see what I'm saying? So that's what we got to get at. We got to get at the spiritual Torah, not just the natural, as in wearing the pants. Because I don't mind if a woman wear the pants. Once she understands I'm head to house, I can care less. But that's not what's really going on. That's not what's really going on. We look at what's really going on. You got a lot of single mothers that are head. That's really what's going on in the black community. So we look at what's really going on. Should they head to households? No. Should they wear the pants? They can wear pants as long as they're staying the husband's head of the household, but really wearing the pants to most people means they're the head of the household. So from that perspective, I have to say no, because I understand what it means to most people. And I wouldn't tell people it's okay for women to wear pants. Uh, wear the pants. You know how you say, I wear the pants. You know, if, you know, so when people say that, they don't just mean they're not just talking about the gun. They're not just talking about the gun. They're talking about something else. So if we look at it from that perspective, if I say I'm gay, I'm not telling you I'm happy. And if I say I'm gay, I mean I'm happy. But for most people, I can't say I'm gay. Because people will understand it to mean I'm homosexual. So in that sense, I was afraid from saying that I'm gay. I would just simply say I'm happy. So I have to change my communication methods cause, cause so the people can understand what the message is. Now, in my, so the black church, when they were uneducated, said the women shouldn't wear the pants. They were uneducated. And they also said women... They said men should wear lipstick. I mean, they said they also said women could wear makeup. They also said that too. But then, as the sisters brought out, our European ancestors, the men wore makeup and they wore wigs and they wore stockings. So you see, you gotta be careful. You gotta be real careful. That white man been tricking us since the beginning. And anytime you build a premise of war on the European white man, that you in trouble. And I know you built it up there. So, <laughs> so you're going to get yourself in trouble anytime you build anything on what that white man says. So uh, I just want to say this. No scripture says it's wrong for women to wear pants. Let me say that. I have to say that. I have to say that. No scripture says that. However, what does wearing the pants mean is the question I'm proposing to the panel. Does it have a connotative meaning? And if it does, then we have to refrain from saying, not saying it's wrong to wear pants, but saying that the women go around saying they wear the pants. Because, see, I don't think, you know what I'm saying? So we got to look at, I think we got to look at that. So my question to the panel is, does wearing the pants have an additional meaning than just wearing the pants? I'm done. All right. All right, all right. I was the voice of Brother Mercy. And yes, Brother Mercy, it has a, a connotative uh, meaning. It, you know, it infers that, again, as we're hearing. But, again, where did the, where did the saying bring home the bacon? All of these sayings have an origin. Mm-hmm. Father Abraham wasn't saying he wore the pants because he didn't wear the pants. You understand what I'm saying? He didn't say, put your leg, your hand under my pant leg. He said, put your hand under my thigh and swear. So, again, I understand what you're saying, and but what I'm seeing is that we're trying to make history adjust to us as opposed to if we're going to go in and, and look and, and, and phone lines are coming. I agree, yes, it has a meaning in today's society, but if we're looking at history, we can't make history say what we want it to say if it is that we're trying to really understand. And I have to bring this up. For instance, I'm reading a lot of narratives that were written in another time. I can't force myself, and I just said it yesterday as I'm reading this, because there's a lot of words that they use that today it will be perceived as something lewd. But I can't use today's vernacular to interpret what they meant then, just like you're saying about the word gay. There's another word they often use is promiscuous. At that time, promiscuous did not mean that you were running around lane with a whole bunch of people. It meant that you were speaking to a mixed crowd. And so I find myself having to look at the terminology as it was used in that day because I can't go back and change history. So history, I'm trying to understand history. I'm not trying to... Uh, change it to where to fit what I am doing today, and that's the problem we're running into, is that we are trying to change it to mean what we want it to mean today, as opposed to understanding it. And like you're saying, you can't get the principle of something that you don't understand. And this is what we, we you know, the baby doesn't care about spirituality to that degree. They want to know about the food, clothes, and shelter, how the thing go. So we need to get. We need to get what it really is saying, and then we're able to get the principle and apply it in our lives today. And we misapply these things when we, again, try to put, you know, the euro up in there, his stockings, his wigs, and anything else, and then we blindside on one thing or the next. But I definitely know we have some hands in the air. Brother 
Sal, keep a look out for 404 with the hand in the air. Brother Sal, are you there? We definitely going to come back to the panel. Oh, yeah. We're going to come back to the jumping. Brother Sal? Yeah, most definitely. We do got people standing by waiting to chime into this conversation. Again, that number, once again, 319-527-6239. That's 319-527-6239. Uh, by the way, people, we have like 14 minutes on the air, but we're going to have the overtime part of the show. If need be, we've got to go to the overtime part of the show. That's okay. What that means for you guys on social media, if you're listening on, you know, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, once that 14 minutes is up, you're going to have to call in and hear the rest of the show live. Again, the number is 319-527-6239. Again, feel free to call in. Once you call in, press number one if you want to say anything, you have a question or a comment. But let's go back to the people. Let's go to 404-839. You're live in air. Hello? 404. Hey, hey how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, First of all, I'd like to say this is a um, pretty important topic. Um, I think it's one of those topics that has kind of uh, made us restless for a long time. I have been listening back and forth, so I apologize if I'm a little bit redundant and my phone was dropping. But I wanted to go into a, uh, a couple things when they were discussing um, the actual, um, when they were translating it. And I understand that, um, you know, cake is only as good as its ingredients, so I guess your information is only as good as your your research. But I've always understood and researched it to mean articles of war. Uh, that's one point I wanted to make. I wanted to also, um, I know that the, 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 the question of the evening was in reference to the uh, reference of the, the woman wearing the pants. It, to me, it's kind of almost like the, the N-word. It's like, what kind of power are we giving to this? Because also in my research with the pants, I noticed uh, somebody noted the Asian culture and pants weren't also always um, a thing of masculinity per se, but almost like class system. If you look at some of the old Asian movies, you'll see where the working class, because they were working, they were moving, they wore some type of pants like attire because they were working and they were moving and they were stretching and it would be very inappropriate for a woman to be doing all that type of activity if she's up and she's cleaning and in this big formal dress. So you notice that you see the people that were of the working class or or the blue collar people with the pants on and you see the the aristocratic people with the the big dresses and so on and so forth. And um, I also wanted to say as far as – I think that sometimes, uh, like the sisters also brought out, sometimes we get confused with, we confuse custom with law. You know, um, the the Torah is very specific and very clear if we take the time to look at the, the words and the meaning, the meaning and the structure around it of what it means. And what we've done is we've, we've taken culture and we've made it law. And um, that right there is a violation. I wanted to say, um, you know, it's, it's interesting at, what we point out as being European, um, because we, we've had a lot of European influence, and, and the pants is, is really not even one. Just in talking about the conversation with the pants and, and how it just represents power, and that's very European. The Europeans, they didn't treat their women the way people of color treated their women. They didn't have the say They didn't have, you know, so a lot of this this influence, we have to check our own self and check our own spirit because a lot of this attitude that we have toward each other and toward our woman and and afraid of whatever kind of authority and power that these magical pair of pants are going to possess, you know, is a a European influence in and of itself. Uh, Let me see. Uh, 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 We lost so much. I was going to also point out that, you know, anytime we think of culture, we want to throw in some kente cloth or something like that. And a lot of these different other materials and stuff have all meanings that we know not of. And I was going to say we're we're at a very exciting point, if you will, in our culture because using the Torah and, 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 and the readings and like how the sister brought out about the covering and going before the priest and you can't uncover your hair if it wasn't covered, we have the opportunity to use – the text of the of the Torah and our, and our history, and and a little bit of common sense, and create our own, you know, sense of um, of culture, you know, based on modesty. I like the point the sister made about you know we're we're 
we're daughters of the Most High God. You know, that's that's the criteria. You don't you don't get to dress whatever because you're married and you have another sort of dress because you're not married. I think that that's those are these are just little these are little just um, topics that that boil over in, into the larger issue. I know other people are waiting, so I'm trying to look at my little list, articles of war, and think, oh, and I'm glad that the sister addressed that that point when the brother um, skipped to the uh, portion in Isaiah and didn't read the chapters prior about the, the man taking hold to seven wives or what, whatever. That That is the, the biggest backwards understanding of, of that portion. You know, it's almost like, it's almost like a disgrace. It's almost like marrying a homosexual uh, uh, and saying, don't worry about it. We ain't got to do whoa, nothing. Whoa, they just have to make my get your insurance and all that other stuff. Yeah, I know that's yeah, kind yeah. of, you, know, you yeah, have to go back and I think uh, Sister Muna, uh, she, she, she tore that one up on another one of her portions that she did. But um, I think those are just the key points that I just kind of wanted to throw out. Uh, I think that the most important thing is that um, the conversation has been started. And and it's and it's important and um and I think that when we start this conversation and we start drafting and crafting what we're gonna call as our culture, that we do take in, into consideration modesty, whether it's pants or whether it's a, a skirt. That's it for me. Okay. Thank you for that, thank you for that. That was the voice of Sister Sarai. Uh, again, she was she was coming back with it. A lot of uh, taking a lot of points into what have been said. Uh, again, it's understandable uh, that some people may think this is an elementary conversation, as this is what I just said. But it's a necessary one because of how it's being used and misused. Again, we're not saying don't be modest and not saying don't represent the Most High. But what we are saying, and I will say for myself, I'm a stickler. <laughs> and anybody who knows me knows I'm a stickler. Do not misrepresent a text so that you can usurp the creator's authority and put it in your own hand. For that, I have an issue. And so when I see texts that cause stirs in the community, since I've known myself, I, I go and pour over the text. And I search and dig up everything I could, could see and ask the creator honestly, you know, because anytime we see issues around an issue, a situation, uh, more often than not, we're applying our own understanding. And something beneath it is not the most high's will, it's individual's will. You know, and so when we take what is supposed to be onto the creator and people's will, it says not by strength or by might, but by my spirit, says the most high. So those who are going to come, those who are going to represent, those who are going to walk and speak and move as servants of the creator will not be forced or cajoled or manipulated into doing so. And so, again, we are seeing a breakdown in an old paradigm of this type of mentality. And, it, and hopefully, prayerfully, these conversations will help us to understand that when we're wise, we're wise unto ourselves. You know, there are other things that we can go into as it relates to um, mixed materials is another thing that many people don't want to speak about, but it's plain in the Scripture, and we tend to, as is being said, Choose, pick and choose what we want to harp on so that it can either empower us or disempower another individual. And so we're kind of playing that power struggle. But, Brother Sal, thank you for that, Sister Sarai. Brother Sal, is there anyone else with a hand in the air before we go back to the panel? Because I know the panel is popping tonight. Um, is there anybody with their hand in the air? Uh, yes, we do. We have more people standing by. And once again, as a reminder, we have five minutes on the air. People, that's five minutes on the air. But you can still hear the rest of the show if you call in. We're going to go into the overtime part of the show. Once that time runs out, you have to call in and hear the rest of the show live. Again, the number is 319-527-6239. Again, that's 319-527-6239. We're going into the overtime part of the show very soon. So make sure you call in. And, uh, again, you can still ask your questions in your comments during the overtime part of the show. Just simply call in and press number one, and we'll add you in the conversation. Let's go to the next person. Let's go to 718-207. You're live on the air. Hi, Shalom, everyone. Hey, All right, now. Shalom. Oh, what's going on? Hi, how are you? I just had uh, uh, two, I guess, two questions. Um, the first one is uh, Sister Mayana and Sister Imun, if you guys wear pants, and if you do or don't, uh, could you elaborate as to why or why not? And to Sister Mayana, you had mentioned about um, historically 
there was a proof that women wore pants. I think you said something about 415 or so BC or CE. Is that correct? Could you just uh, reiterate that information for me? Oh, okay, yes. Uh, so uh, this is the voice of Mariana. Yes, I did mention that uh, around 400 BC, it's approximately, I want to say, 470 BC, it was uh, among the Amazons. There's a vase that depicts in the Amazon uh, women wearing pants, and that was um, in 470 BCE. BCE, and I see okay. question, Yeah. Um, now, as for when I wear pants, as, as often as I can, no. No. Well, I said that I have never worn pants that would be untoothed, but for the most part, but again, not because of the Deuteronomy 22, but because of the fact that I feel more feminine. I appreciate, you know, the the the, the garment more. It feels more feminine to me. And it's part of what I believe is part of our 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 modesty standards, but it's not mm-hmm. because of any erroneous information. Um, no, I'm not. Again, like when, when I began the conversation, it's not because I want to advocate or encourage women to wear pants, but instead that when I go out and I wear my dresses, when I wear my fringes, when I have my head covered, the information that I'm giving when people are curious about it, it is not because I'm going to point uh, to Torah and falsely implicate verses that do not apply. Why? Because I'm not going to go and have a conversation that isn't intelligent. And this Deuteronomy 22 conversation is not intelligent. Okay. All right. Thanks for that question. As, as I said earlier, I personally do not have not in, I can't even count, remember how many years. Like, like Sister Maya said, when I was younger and I didn't, I wasn't aware of certain levels, but as I came into a fuller knowledge of myself, no. And, again, I said throughout this conversation, I'm not saying go and put on the body writers or go put on your tight up right up leopard prints and, and put your fringes on the side. But what is being said um, is that, as Sister Maya just said so right about now, I'm just echoing, there is an elevation in our quest to get closer to the Most High, to reexamine many of the things that we have been told and put it into its proper context. Just because we think that we're going to get a good result from what we're doing, that still does not give us the right to alter to our understanding what is being said. We see a very interesting situation of this when it relates to Samuel, Samuel and Saul. Saul was told to do something specifically, and Saul thought he was doing a good thing. Hey, you told me, you know what I mean, you ain't come, so I did the thing. He didn't do something crazy, wild, and ridiculous till after. Then he went to the other woman. But the point of the matter is because he very just added what he thought he needed to add, it caused an issue. And this is what Israel is doing. We are taking liberty with the text. And when we are pressed, we cannot answer. And what it does is it makes the most high, who we say we represent, or the word of the creator, Come into, come into question, as opposed to the person who told you the misinformation. And many people are walking away because, uh, sister, you got on pants. You see right here, Deuteronomy 22 and 5 say you abomination. And you going to hell. Is that correct? Is that correct to say? Did you want to say something else? But well, that was the only tool you had in your toolbox, so you used that. And for, for <laughs> me, that is what I'm stressing this evening. So um, definitely good question. Uh, do you have anything else to say? Feel free to do so. If not, Brother Sal, we're going to check the phone line. Can I say something real quick? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on one second, quick? Brother. Uh, the, let's see if the caller, Sister Naomi, and see I have anything else to say before we we go to Brother Awar. No, that's great. That was, yeah, no. that's a great conversation. A great conversation. I just want to add that. That's Thank right, you thanks. for the question, sis. Brother Awar, the mic is yours. I know you wanted to say something no, earlier, was... Brother. Go ahead and do your thing. Oh, I thought that was Brother Mercer. That was Mercy or Brother War? That was Brother Mercy just now. All right, go ahead, Mercy. The mic is yours. Yeah, First Corinthians six twelve says Paul is writing. He says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I would not be mastered by anything. I wanted to say in some translations it says I, I, everything is lawful for me to do, but everything is not helpful. Everything's not beneficial. So while while 
some things may be lawful, and this is where we're getting to with Awad, and this is my contention with him, is that, yes, we saying I am gay, that's lawful to say because I know what gay means. Gay means happy. However, however, I'm at liberty to say that, but I would not say that because I don't want to send the wrong message. And this goes back to the pants thing. Now, women wearing pants, because the culture, a lot of times our culture, we live in, in this culture today. Uh, like one sister said, although she's at liberty to wear pants, she still feels more feminine wearing a dress. Why? Because she's been affected by the culture. That's why you have that attitude, and that's why you have that feeling, because whether you want to admit it or not, the culture has influenced our thinking. So that's why you think a certain way. That's why you think it's more uh, feminine to wear this than that although all things are lawful, okay? I just wanted to point that out. Because when you go to a store, I keep this is my first point, they have a woman's department and they have a men's department. So it's very clear. It's very clear. Things will change to a man and to a woman. So I, I, I think this gets to, now if we want to be legalistic and say women can't wear pants, that's when we get in trouble because pants is not the defining is not the defining tool to use. So what I wanted to say is all the women are at liberty to wear pants. What kind of message are we sending? Are we, are, is it just the pants? Or are we saying, and see, the topic should have been, can women wear women pants? It don't say women pants. Your topic is not women pants. Your topic is pants. So you see, that's where the confusion come in. Because at one time, pants only pertain to a man, going back to a war's point. But you didn't say women's pants, you said pants. So when people think pants, they think men. They're not thinking women. So you see, I think that goes back to uh, what point, although I have a contention with them, I understand this point because your topic deals with pants, not with things pertaining to a woman, not with things pertaining to a man, because pants don't just pertain to men, and pants just don't pertain to women. But when you say that word pants, most people put it in the mad box. So when most of you put in the man box, you're not just, it's not just about the clothing. And I think once we be honest and understand that the, when you say should women wear the pants, I don't think we're just saying clothing. I think We it didn't say should women, women wear the pants. Okay, that's the problem. Uh, we never said should women wear the pants. And I, that's, that's an addition to, to okay, the topic. Pants. What does that mean? Correct. What does that mean? And the reason where pants means only what it means. The distinction between whether or not pants is feminine or masculine is why we're having the discussion. That is why the topic is appropriate because of the fact that in the Hebrew community, and I appreciate you giving us what's happening in the churches, and I appreciate that there's this other perspective. But the fact is, when we're talking to the Hebrew community, which is who our audience is, the conversation is always Deuteronomy. It's always Exodus. It's always about whether or not breaches and whether or not uh, Exodus is referring to um, the God. Just, like, it, what, what, what war did is what Hebrews do. They go to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. They don't go to the long church history of whether or not women wore big hats, right. whether or not they wore makeup, whether or not they were pants, that's uh, whether how literate the church is. None of that is on the mind of the Hebrew community. And when we have these conversations with outsiders, none of us are talking about that, which is why we had it that way. We phrased it that way. We phrased it that way so that the audience could have better information. It's great to tell them about all of the historical aspects because of the fact that the Hebrew community still, just like in, in antiquity, in modernity, does not live in a vacuum. The fact is we have been impacted by the church uh, histories and the church theologies, and a lot of that got recycled into our, our Hebrew understanding and communication. So hearing about that from you is extremely beneficial. But to, to, to judge or to, to say that the way we phrase our topic was somehow uh, misinformed or, or perhaps inappropriate in some way, unfortunately, it isn't. It would be great if we made a mistake in the way we worded it. But it's not a mistake because it's what we're seeing. A lot of our topics are coming from the trenches. So instead of uh, instead of faulting the topic, we have to fault what, what precedes the topic. And that's okay, the can topic. I take it real quick? Can I say something? Let me say real quick. Say real quick. Let me say real quick. Your topic, I, I, I'm not attacking the topic. What I'm saying is there's such, some things called theory 
then there's certain things called practice. When you put your topic in practice, you can't go to a store and just buy pants. You have to buy either women's pants or men's pants. You can't just buy pants. So you see, okay. that, that, see, that, see that's a theory, but with a practice, when you actually go to the store, you actually have to pick which department you're going in. So once you do that, now you're saying, is it a loss to buy women's pants? I would say absolutely yes. But if uh-huh. you're going to men's department to buy men's pants, I'm going to say no. Right. So I'm in right. theory, in theory, you are right. In practice, what the Hebrew community is doing is not going into the department. They are using uh, uniformly Deuteronomy 22 and 5 to make a blanket statement about what breaches means and or or, or what uh, apparel. So we are discussing that based on the practice. We're not, we're not talking in theory. We're not dealing with hypotheticals. We're dealing with real conversations that are happening in social media, in, 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 in conversations in people's houses and in their families and in these relationships that are tearing things apart. This is a relationship challenge for a reason because of the fact that women are being told they can't wear pants. Because the men are not seeing the difference between uh, female pants and male pants. They're saying all pants is masculine. Look at the zipper. Okay, this is what, this is the kind of conversation that the women are dealing with. And for you, it may be trivial because you don't get to be a woman in Israel. But for the women that have to deal with this conversation, it's extremely important. It is not trivial for them. For them, this is what's happening when they wake up and make breakfast. For them, it's when they go and try to open their mouth and have a conversation. For them, it is what establishes whether or not they have the they have the ability to engage the community at all. Their self worth is hanging on these things that you are calling trivial or problematic when they are not. Now I understand that from your perspective, and I understand that from the history of the church, and I understand that Macy has different departments. So I can't explain that to the sisters who don't know whether or not it is okay for them to wear pants. And if it's not okay, is it because of Deuteronomy 22 and 5? Or is it because of some larger conversation that nobody is having? And that is all that I am trying to project to you. Ding, 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 ding. Man, this thing's time has flown. Like, woo! <laughs> it's a 10 o'clock hour. Y'all have me floating. I'm like, what in the world? But, uh, again, because we enter in at so many different points, and we're going to check on Brother South, see if we got um, anyone on the phone lines. Because we're entering at different points in this conversation, these topics are important. Your patience is appreciated. Your understanding is needed. Because as Sister Mayana is pointing out, I hear Brother Mercy, I hear Brother War, I hear Sister Mayana, I hear the callers, and everyone has a different story and conversation of how they entered in. And if you're a male, it's a different perspective. If it's a female, you're a different perspective. If you came in off the street, it's a different perspective. If you found out a different way. And mostly where this doctrine is coming from is if you come – through brothers who are either on now what is YouTube ministry back in the day is the street, and I can't I can't stress this enough that if the first thing you say to somebody is that you're an abomination because you're in pants and you quote Deuteronomy 22 and 5 like Sister Mina said, and that person begins to read and learn and grow and realize that you misled them, that becomes a problem. That puts a trust issue into the equation. Like Sister Mina said, is it another conversation that we're use, needing to have and we're hiding it under the guise of Deuteronomy 22 and 5 and the, and the person Exodus? If we are doing that, we are in error. If we want to talk about modesty, that's what's up. If we want to talk about carrying yourself as a daughter, that's what's up. If you want to talk about carrying yourself as a son. But all I'm saying, and, and we've said this in many other occasions, we cannot continue to misuse the script to oppress people. Make that or allow that individual to make that choice. It's the same way when you go to work, and I'm going to come to Brother Sal. There is a dress code before you came there. They didn't ask you, hey, what you want to wear? You, you know, I was thinking, what, what colors do you think the company should be? No. They're like, hey, thank you for wanting to work at our location. Here is the uh, employee guide. If you turn to page 5, section A, you'll see what we allow. That's kind of how it rolls. So I, I find it funny that when we come into the realm of the most high, all of a sudden now we want to express our literal creativity and begin to make up all kind of rules of what is acceptable and what is not. The highest level or example of holiness, quadog, set apart that we have is the dress of the high priest. And from head 
to toe, he is adorned. And it is not like, oh, you know what, Mosai, you know, I was thinking, I don't really like, you know, the, the white cotone that you have me to put on. I don't really like the way that joint. I was thinking that possibly it could be gold. No. <laughs> and the Mosai gives us liberty to say, you know, but certain things, there's no liberty. And the question is, are we giving liberty where there's no liberty and taking liberty where there is liberty? And that is the question that continues to plague us as a community as we seek uniformity to a certain degree amongst. Because you see varying degrees of Israelites. You will see those from head to toe and face covered, head covered, feet covered. And then you see people who tell you that you could put ZTs on, on, on body rider shorts or what do they call it, Daisy Dukes. Like, how do you have that varying degree of what is permissible? I mean, where is the median? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? These are the conversations that need to have because before you open your mouth, people see you. If the front and back of you is printed out, that's a problem. You understand what I'm saying? So a lot of people say dress is not important, but let your doctor come in there talking about they're going to operate in some body rider high pumps with stockings on, fishnet. You're going to have a problem. You're going to be like, you, are, you don't look like you're capable to do what it is that you're saying you're supposed to do. So dress precedes us. It is an important topic because it's what is people see before we even open our mouths. And so, um, Brother Sal, if you're there uh, and if there's any hands in the air, you know, I thank everybody for tuning in and sticking with us with this very touchy subject. You start touching, talking about what people wearing and how you look. You know, Israel is real touchy about that. But it's all good. We're going to make our way through. Brother Sal? All right, we're in the OT, overtime part of the show, and I appreciate everybody that's remaining with us via phone and via Skype. I see a lot of callers still here checking out the show, The Relationship Challenge, Volume 20, Dressing for the Part, Who Wears the Pants. Uh, let me go back to the phone line. Let me go to 718-207. Uh, is there anything, uh, anything else you want to add? 718-207, that. No, I'm sorry, that was it. That was it. Oh, okay. My phone was on mute. Sorry, sorry. Okay, I got Thank you. you. I got you. All right, yeah, I don't see anybody else pressing number one. Once again, I see a lot of people listening to the show. But if you press number one, we'll add you in. If not, we could continue with the dialogue. And by the way, a water swordsman call actually dropped. You know how the overtime part of the show is. For some reason, uh, it knocks all people off the line and they can't call back. I don't know what it is. It's crazy. But, um, yeah, uh, there's nobody else pressing number, number one, Amuna. But uh, I am yeah. getting a lot of responses on social media in regards to the topic. Some people are actually confused. Uh, some people are saying that, uh, what about the part, who's wearing the pants in regards to that part of the topic? Uh, do you want to elaborate more on that part, aspect of the topic? That. Okay, definitely. And I just want to say for you know, a practice that I make as it relates to the blog talk, when South starts to announce 15 minutes left, just hang up and call back because for some reason, if you wait to the end, Blog Talk doesn't like if you sometimes were on there from the beginning. So I find if I drop the call myself and call back in, then it allow me to, to uh, proceed with the conversation. So, um, and, and I agree. The, 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 the title was, when I went back and looked, Who Wears the Pants? And, again, it was um, some a title that was used to open up the very dialogue that we're having. I know we – I've concentrated a lot on the fact that does the women wear the pants? But as it relates to the text, does the man wear the pants? <laughs> because that exactly, we haven't directly gone to that, but we, are, we have been in a roundabout way discussing that because textually the man didn't wear the pants outside either unless you was in his house and you saw his underwear. But I'm going to go to, um, you said a war dropped. I'm going to go to Sister Mayana now and, and, uh, again, the thought system, Mayana, who wears the pants? They want to hear a little bit about who wears it. And, then again, we have to come to modern-day times We're in a space where both are wearing the pants. Uh, and I guess touch on what it is that Brother Mercy was talking about as it relates to what it actually translates into spiritually. So, Sister Mayana, the mic is yours. Uh, thank you for that. Earlier in the segment, I did address Brother Mercy and that question about women wearing the pants and the idea or addressing the concept that by wearing the pants is a signal of authority. Um, 
the fact remains that if we're going to talk about it in that context, and obviously it's a valid context, the fact remains that in many households there is just the woman. So to complain that she's wearing the pants but not complain that she's left alone to provide seems a bit mis- um, mismatched. If we do not want to see women wearing the pants, if we do not want to, like I said previously, then this should not be her burden to shoulder. Uh, in a context where there's a woman and a man in the household, then obviously he should be the provider. Obviously, according to our cultural standards and norms, the male is the lead in that household. But where there's no male, in the, or, or if there's an officer, you have to, when you have this conversation, are we then going to say, you know what, we don't like the fact that these women are wearing pants. These women who are tasked with providing, they should not be wearing the pants. Do we put all the men who have uh, skirted the the the, the expectation of providing, do we put them all in script? Because they're not providing. They are not doing what we expect them to do in the house. So if pants is a symbol of authority, the pants is the connotation for providing. If pants is the, is the signal that there's a lead in the house, if the man is not occupying any of those spaces, is the appropriate mantle for him the, the, a feminine garment? Uh, what are we really discussing here? I mean, if we're going to talk, so who wears the pants? Okay, well, let's, again, if we're going to be just uh, literal, obviously I'm not going to advocate for any woman wearing pants because I personally, wherever possible, prefer to wear dresses. Dresses, more so than skirts, but dresses. Um, but the only reason the conversation was important from my perspective was that there was so much uh, bad information to to discredit the, the the use of pants or the wearing of pants, um, but again, to keep to the to the current flow uh, in terms of who wears the pants. If we're going to talk about how it is used in metaphorically and in al- an analogy, then it's the person that's providing. And if we're going to be realistic about who is providing, then there are going to be times so that's going to be the woman, especially if we're talking about. Black households, our community, and where men, if you're not there, you abandon this household, you abandon your role as a, as a authority figure. I really don't know what's the belly aching about in terms of what she's wearing while she's taking over the responsibility that you deserted. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. It gets very interesting. Again, the, the, the conversation is split up into what, Area are you coming from? What perspective are you coming from? Hopefully, prayerfully, for those who've been listening, it, 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 again, I know it sounds a bit confusing, but I, I keep trying to reiterate that if we're going, that if we're coming from the Torah, then we have to try our best to contextually analyze the text, and that's one of the things we're not taught. It's not, you know, oftentimes you're not taught. Hey, you know what? You're an Israelite. Sit down. Let me teach you how to critically analyze the text uh, within the context of the time frame and the period. You don't get that. You get a lot of dogmatic uh, uh, understanding. And, again, as you grow and that begins to fall away and you begin to analyze, then you call into question those people who misled you. And so we see a small fragment of those in and around us pushing for education, and I'm one of those people. <laughs> Sister Mayana is one of those people. Brother Sal opens the platform for this very reason because this is no longer sufficive. If you go out into the into roundabout you where now everybody's making noise, hey, look at us, hey, look over here, wee, wee, hello, and you have people who are actually studying, and then they, they, they allow you to, to make a, a, a fool of yourself by proclaiming things that clearly it doesn't say. This is where we are beginning to run up into problems. And so these type of things are very necessary because if you're going to quote something, then hopefully we're quoting it within context. And so I'm going to check on Brother Mercy. Brother Mercy, are you there? Let us know, Brother Mercy. I know you gave us your point. Yes, do you have I'm a say on part of the show? Yes, I do. Yes, I Brother do. Brother Mercy, the mic? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. What I was going to say is that um, I think, and I think this goes, I mean, and then we, we, I know you say church history, 
you know, that's outside of Hebrew history, which is true, but we have been influenced by the church. And this doctrine comes from the black church. I know we don't want to give it to them, but they're the originators of that because I heard it and I never, this is before I even heard there was a Hebrew Israelite. I heard it through the black church when I was growing up, women can't wear paint. I don't heard that when I was growing up in the black church. So I heard it straight from the black church and they're not Hebrews. So I, I know it's where, I know the source of this. This comes from the, this is what they promote, and I think the Hebrews may have borrowed this from them because they definitely get it from Torah. They definitely get it from Torah, and they didn't get it from Hebrew, history, uh, Hebrew culture either. So obviously they got it from over here in, in, in this context. I know where they got it from. And then how much they claim they hate the black church, but they steal things from the black church and not realizing this mentality where it came from. And I really I believe that. Yeah, I know you said that. I'm just reiterating okay. that. Because the thing is, um, I'm talking about the Hebrew like this on the street. They'll never tell you they heard that from a black preacher. They'll act like, you know, they got this from Deuteronomy 22 5. They didn't give it to right. They got it from a <laughs> black preacher. That's what I'm saying. They're saying that they got it from Deuteronomy 22 5, but the black preacher read 22 25 and misinterpreted. Why? Because most black preachers back in the early 1900s could not read. And just like a lot of black people today, we're really honest. Look at the education system. A lot of our blacks, black young people are, are miseducated, and they most, they, you can even read this, all research, all published, most blacks don't read on grade level. So, therefore, since that's true, you can deceive them with this foolishness. So, the thing is, like you study, I study, I promote education, I know this, and I have enough common sense to know that when I go to a store and I see the men's department and I see the women's department and I see the children's department, there are three different, there are seven different departments. I know which department I'm shopping for if I'm shopping for myself. So I think that context has to be brought into perspective as well. Because if you just say women can't wear pants, if you just like the practice of done, if you just say that, you have no origin for that because you can't say pants only belong to men. And if you do that, you going back like you said to Europeans. And if you do that, they wore like you said, they they wore wigs too. So I mean, now you saying that wigs pertain to a man as well. So, I mean, it, it goes on and on. And and, and what, what I wanted to say is that, real simple, is that uh, can, should um, men, I mean, should, I mean, your topic is who should wear the pants? Now, your question, now, who should wear the pants? That's a question, right? So, my answer would be uh, men should wear men's pants and women should wear women's pants. That's how I would answer that. Because we say who should wear the pants, determining whether men or women, now, was, now when you answer that question that way, you're then putting, you're putting, you're, you're then saying, if I say, say if I say men, now you're saying that pants only pertain to men. And if I say women, then you're saying only pants belong to women if you answer that question that way. Now, of course, that question brought this dialogue, but I just wanted to say, I think when you ask that question, who wears the pants, I think there's a connotative meaning to that question. And, 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 from, and that's what we're talking about now. We finally, I mean, we got there. I know we're going to get there later, but we got there now. What does that pants really mean? It means head in the household. It means providing. I don't think it just means just the pants, and that's what y'all, y'all are talking about now. So we look at it from that perspective. What's going on now? The women are the heads of households, but they're not the head of household because they wear pants. They're the head of household because men have vacated their responsibility. So it had nothing to do with the pants. So we argue over pants when pants is not the issue. The issue is the men are not in their right position. That's the issue, not about pants. But that's what we do as black people. We look at the clothing. We look at the outside of pants. I look at the inside of pants. And we're, we're arguing over things that are really not really the problem because whether the women change her clothing not going to change the position of the man. Because <laughs> if the women go put on dresses tomorrow, it's not going to change the situation. Pants is not going to answer the problem is what I'm trying to say. We're, we're, and, we're, and that's not to take away from discussion because it's a good discussion. But I'm just saying if we work towards the solution, I don't think the solution is only men should wear pants. I think the solution is... Uh, men should take their responsibilities back. Now, the pants may be a signal of these things, but uh, but at the same time, I don't know if the pants just doing that by itself is going to solve what our real issue is. And like you said, already, this has already pointed this out. Are we arguing over issues when the issues that we're arguing, the issues that presented us, are not addressing the real problem at hand? You know, are we, are we, are we, we arguing over pants? And we, so we so, so keep talking about what the real problem is, or are we looking at the real problem? And I think the real problem is underneath those pants. And the thing is, 
um, that will bring us to the answer. But to answer your question, I think men should wear men's pants and women should wear women's pants. Maybe some Hebrews will come around and agree to that. Um, but I, I'm of the persuasion that men should wear men's clothing and women should wear women's clothing, wherever that clothing is. And I think Torah gives you the liberty to do that because the Torah gives you a lot of liberty. All the specific, it gives you a lot of liberty. That's why we should not be in bondage because when you start saying things like that, we start judging like that, we put people in bondage. And then when you say women shouldn't wear pants, then her wearing the dresses is not going to change the situation. I, I don't think it's going to change the situation. But like I said earlier, um, like we already agreed, that uh, I think there's a larger issue here, and we're arguing over the pants, you know. So, uh, again, I will say this real quickly, is that to answer that question, who wears the pants, I think both genders wear the pants, but I think men should wear, wear uh, pants pertaining to a man and women wear pants to a woman. That's all. That's all. All right. We had a mixed conversation today. Hopefully uh, you you got something out of it. Hopefully you got some information that you will go and research. You will look up. There are many questions. It's, it's some of what we think, some of what is, some of what we misinterpret. Um, and so we have to kind of categorize those things from personal opinion to what the text is actually being saying and what someone does personally. So you got a kind of mix of that tonight, and hopefully you were able to decipher that. I definitely want to thank everybody who participated on the the panel. I know we have callers who are listening in, and we probably have some people salty in the back, like, yeah, they trying to teach that women's lip. <laughs> Nothing at all. You know what I'm saying? Don't be easy. Don't put too much salt in the game. That will be high blood pressure. Right. The, the, the reality is, I've said it before, and I, I find the need to keep saying it. This is not personal for me. It's not because I, I want to be like, I'm coming out, and I want the freedom to do. That's not it. I I do because of a personal uh, choice, not because my arm is being twisted with a with a, a, a scripture like Sister Mayana said. There's a different vibration when you adorn yourself in a flowing garment. There's right. some things I could do as it relates to health wise. There's a whole lot of things I could do, but that would be of a different conversation. It wouldn't be of specifically saying Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Man's garment breachers, you woman, you know we're breachers. You right. understand what I'm saying? And that right. for me, that's why I kept coming back to this point. Is the was the focus of what I wanted to address as it relates to the man and woman? Because you, we may think it's small, but there's someone somewhere right now as we speak. Shalom, sis. How you doing? Oh, I'm here. Yeah, go ahead and open your Bible and do the Rami 22 and fast. I'm gonna show you why you <laughs> right now. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Or five I'm minutes ago, is that conversation I'm happening? We make light of it. But I've heard men complain of the woman not succumbing to their interpretation of the text. It causes fights. This month is Domestic right. Violence Awareness Month. October, we should always be aware of domestic violence. We should not make light of it when men feel as though they cannot control their partner and women feel like they cannot control their partner. They seek mm-hmm. to being uh, physically violent, emotionally aggressive, you know, mm-hmm. verbally tearing them down. So this is, it may seem small to us, but we don't know what the catalyst for an, an emotional uh, people who is in a tumultuous state could be. Mm-hmm. And something as simple as, I told you to take those off, so I'm going to rip it off of you. We may think it's simple because we may not be in the position where, it, it is the, the deciding factor of what happens in that household. So I definitely don't take it as a simple matter. I have heard of women getting beat for not subscribing to a certain thought process. Right. You understand? And so, you know, just to sober up the conversation a little bit, to understand that, you know, we just got to be a bit uh, aware and sensitive that there's so many things going in and around, in and around us, and it's not so linear it's not so cut and dry, especially in a space where so many, uh, so much misinformation is being disseminated. So I'm going to check on Sister Mayana, see some last words, and we're going to come to Brother Sal, and then we're going to go ahead and close it out. Sister Mayana, you have any last words before we go ahead and close it out? Do we have any um, callers on standby? Brother Sal, do we have yeah, any checking. callers on standby? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm looking to see right now. No, there's nobody else uh, 
uh, pressing number one. They're listening, but they're not pressing number one at this moment. Again, if you want to press oh, man, number y'all one. Y'all listening in your pants? See, that's the problem right now. Yeah. Y'all listening in your pants. <laughs> y'all listening in your pants. You're like, nah, I'm not going to press one, because right now I got on my meek, not saying that's the problem. Now I'm playing with y'all. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah. You know, you got a few minutes left. Gotta... You can press number one if you, if you have to. You can press number one, you know, it's your chance to let your voice be heard live. But it's funny, you know what, I don't, having a say in that, you know, I'm, I was just uh, posting up some things uh, on social media, and uh, the next show, <laughs> I love the creativity you got with the the titles this season. Uh, I'm loving the titles, you know. Let's let, <laughs> let people know what the title of the next show is. You know what I mean? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. What's the, what's the hey, title of the next show? Yeah, on these titles. Yeah. <laughs> the next title is. The next title, title pull is. It up. I'd hit it. And <laughs> you got it? the next title. I'd right, hit stop it. right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. I'd hit it. No, stop right there. It's not meaning <laughs> that. <laughs> continue. Continue. <laughs> you see, that's that's a brainstorm right there. Um, I'd hit it discussing <laughs> from domestic violence in the community. Actually, you know, I was telling Sister Manny, yo, October is, you know, and we brainstorming. I said it's domestic violence month. And I said, you know, why do, when we're talking, we're like, why do why do people describe uh, intimacy in such a violent way? Right. Like, right. yo, I hit it. So me, me and Mariana started talking, and we started laughing. And we were like, yo, we should <laughs> name it that because, yeah. you know, People who are like I hit it, yo, I smashed it. I'm like, yo, why are you so violent? That's not like, you know, you know, a car accident. You know, what I'm saying somebody got hit, you can smash something. That's inappropriate. But this is the language that's supposed to be alluring. You know, what I'm saying this is the language, right. and also people, domestic violence is it could be in different ways. Like I said, it could be sexual violence, it could be emotional, it could be mental, it could be all kind of things, physical. And so it's a play on words. I, I, we, we're glad you liked it, Brother Sal. We're glad you liked it. It's a play on words. Uh, this is what people, yo, son, you hit it? They're like, yeah, 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 I hit it. If somebody heard that conversation, they'd be like, yeah, let's get him, boys. Because right. he sounds like he's, uh, you know, but anyway, since somebody had to let me close the words. Go ahead. Yeah, you're right. The, the way it's uh, worded for the next show, if you have seen the, in our, uh, the way talk for you, Leah, on Facebook, uh, we haven't released it um, on the timeline yet, but it's in the Bay Talk for You layer where everybody gets the, the thing first. And it says slap it, hit it, beat it up, domestic, <laughs> domestic abuse in the Hebrew community. And it's not funny, but, you know, the fact is that this is the kind of language that we use, again, as Amuna said, to describe our, our most intimate interactions with one another. And if we use this type of violence in the language that is supposed to imply intimacy, how easy is it then to transition into uh, into spaces where the intent is to be violent and not to be intimate or affectionate and loving? And so this idea of slapping and hitting and beating up the woman or our um, intimate partner, this becomes part of the discourse, part of the intercourse. Um, between us, and we know that intercourse usually evokes or implies this image of sex, but it also has to do with how we communicate. Intercourse is communication. So uh, if, if this is the way we communicate with this degree of, uh, of abusive language, this type of violence in, in, um, in our interactions with one another, then abuses between us becomes almost, almost predictable, almost unavoidable. And, you know, we, we try to very often we present ourselves as a righteous people, as a set-apart people, but we, we, we can't run away from the fact that, again, we don't exist in a vacuum, and the melanated community at large suffers from this, from this type of behavior among, between us. So we don't exist in a vacuum. If the melanated community has this, this um, blight, this block, on it, then of course, you know, we have to do some introspection and say, you know what, we suffer from it too. And a lot of us know people personally, if not um, have personally experienced this, even as Hebrews, even as Hebrews. I know plenty of Hebrew women in relationships with Hebrew men who have been violent. And that's why it's important because it's not something happening to someone else. It's happening to us. 
It's happening to our sisters. And and it's something that we have to talk about. The, you know, whether or not the men are trying, and I think it's because in, in a lot of spaces, for a lot of these conversations, the presence of the men checking one another, men saying to each other, this is not appropriate, this is not... This is not how we protect the women. You know, this is not how we do it. And there's a lot of complaints. I'm going to just, and I'll, I'll end this part. But a lot of the complaints that women have about the way we, we're, we're spoken about, I mean, even if you're not in relationships with these men, it's, really, it's, it's not hard to go onto YouTube and be called everybody's B. You know, it says that you're the NB, you're the BB, you're a black B. Okay. Now, how do we expect to be treated like in this uh, conversation about sisters when the conversation between lovers sound like this? Where is this mentality coming from? How do we curb it? How do we remove it from a righteous people? How can we ensure the safety of our sisters and our daughters? And you know what? And, and our men. I don't want to say that there aren't men that aren't getting getting abused by women who have come from a particular mentality where they want to overshadow and, and uh, intimidate men. There are women like that. I, I have to. I've come recently to that realization. I used to wonder what kind of animal is this, but apparently there are women who who want to intimidate the men. And that has to be addressed. We, again, we're talking about, to bring it back full circle, if we're going to talk about femininity, if we're going to talk about modesty, if we're going to talk about the roles and spaces that we occupy as women, then we need to do that in earnest. We need to do that diligently and using the appropriate information, using bad information, false information, and common rhetoric is not, Going to come is not going to lend itself to any type of uh, resolution, and we need to be more um, con- conscious about these endeavors. With that, I'll yield the floor. I'm good. All right, All right stand all right, by, Amona. Right. Stand by, stand by. We have somebody pressing number one. All right, oh, so let's, go to, <laughs> let's go to the phone line. Let's go to three two three two three two. You're live in air. Hey, shalom, Sal. Uh, this is Amayan. Uh, hey, what's going on, my brother? How you feeling? <laughs> Good. Hey, hey, shalom, shalom, brother. I just called in, just uh, listening to the show. Um, uh, I'll give you my take on what I think. Um, as far as uh, who wears the pants um, today, um, men wear pants, women wear pants. Um, people put pants on animals, you know what I'm saying? So um, I think the question should be, who is supposed to wear the pants? Now, when you, when you come back to the scriptures, to the Bible, um, us Hebrew Israelites, we always go to Deuteronomy 22, of course, and 5. And we reference that uh, a woman shouldn't wear pants based on that scripture. But um, in Exodus chapter 23 and uh, 13, the Most High says, in all things that I have said unto you, he says to be circumspect, means to be sensible. So there, there, is, there are certain times where you cannot, um, or it isn't wisdom to apply a certain law in the Torah. And I'm going to give you an example. When you read in the book of Maccabees, in the book of Maccabees, the Gentiles were attacking the Maccabees on the Shabbat because they wouldn't fight on the Shabbat and they was dying. So they said they could not uh, continue to apply um, the law of uh, of uh, Shabbat, or if they'll be all be dead, it isn't. It wouldn't be wisdom for them to continue to not do nothing on that day, or they all be dead. Now, the law about a, about a woman not wearing pants do not come from the Most High. I mean, do, do not come from a man. Excuse me. It comes from the Most High. So we're just relating to women what the Most High is telling us for women to wear. The dress code for a man and a woman comes from the Most High. If you go all the way back to um, to Genesis, when the Most High made garments for Adam and Eve after they ate the fruit, that right mm-hmm. to determine the garment that the Most High made for a woman and a garment that made for a man. So that came that come that came from the Most High. So as Hebrew Israelite men, we just we just relating 
what the Most High said that the woman's supposed to wear. And it's not nothing, I mean, as far as I know, the men that I know, it's not nothing personal where we're trying to, like, put the women in subjection or trying to control them or anything. We're just relating to them what their creators say they're supposed to wear. We have examples, of course, when it comes to Hamashiach in, uh, in Matthew, where he talks about how David ate the showbread and how the priests profane the Sabbath, and they are blameless. So it isn't about all the time that you have to um, apply the law. There are certain times where you cannot apply the law because, like now, we are still kind of in captivity. Um, can I address this? Uh, because I think that we have spent the last two hours very plainly demonstrating that there is no such law regarding pants. Uh, and earlier in the segment, I did mention Genesis, and in Genesis, it merely states that he made coats of skin and gave them to both of them. There's no distinction in that verse. It just says he made coats of skin, kept moving. So the emphasis and distinctions that the men are giving to the women are not of the law. They are not of the most high. They are of their own imagination and interpretation, which makes it unlawful. Now, in terms of what women should do, again, like we said, if you want to discuss modesty with women, we should do that. If you want to discuss femininity with women, we should also do that. But if we're going to use Deuteronomy 22 and 5 and say that somehow this is talking about pants when it's so very clear that it is not talking about pants, if we're going to say that Deuteronomy 22 and 5 is talking about men and women when so very clearly there's no such distinction, it doesn't say men. It says very particularly, very specifically, uh, a, a man of war or a great man. So I mean, we we just have to be honest. If you want to, if you want to emphasize or impress upon a woman that there should be some types of distinctions, then do that. But you know, none of us are going to argue that. In fact, call me, call the moon. We'll help you. We'll help you. Talk to our sisters about modesty. We will help you emphasize femininity. We will not allow for the most highest word to be added on to by men just simply because they are men. The women can read. They're not illiterate. They can read. And the Hebrew does not say pertain to. It doesn't have that language. Please stop missing from Please stop giving them that information. That's all we are asking. We're not asking you to withdraw and and not talk to the sisters about listen don't wear that don't be just don't be immodest don't don't seduce men don't don't be inappropriate we're not asking you to stop that we, it's necessary for all of us to come back to our appropriate roles the men included I hate to break it to you but the men are not being very modest a lot of the time but these types of codes they should be emphasized they should be addressed but they should be done in earnest. Let's tell the truth about Deuteronomy 22 and 5. It has nothing to do with pants. Let's tell the truth about uh, what breaches means. It has nothing to do with pants. This is underwear. Underwear. The Most High was not sitting around waiting for, for, for the European or whomever else to create pants to help him get the distinction that Moshe is talking about in Torah. That is the fact. Whether I appreciate your, your effort, I appreciate your position, but all we are saying is that let's be uh, let's be scholars about it, let's be academics about it, let's not demonstrate to the world that we have poor reading comprehension skills. That's, that's, I mean, that's my position on that. Okay, can Thank I can I respond? Oh, Absolutely. Well, okay. okay, can I respond? Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. You 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 mentioned um, you mentioned Deuter you mentioned Genesis about all it says was coats of skin, correct? That's what it says. Correct. Now, now, if we're going to if if we're going to apply some wisdom now, let's let's apply some wisdom now. Let's now do we that. know that that let's do, let's apply some wisdom now. Okay. Let's 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 let's, 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 let's go. With, let's let's start at at Exodus where it talks about okay. breaches, right? Mm-hmm. When you read it, when you read it in Exodus. It talks about the man covering up his nakedness when he goes up into the temple. Okay. So the most I said you the most I said you're supposed to wear breeches is the point was to cover up his nakedness. Mm-hmm. Correct? Now Correct. you're saying no, you're saying that that's that, that that's that's underwear. 
Absolutely. So I'm 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 sure that men and women wear underwear. Correct. Not just men, not just men wear underwear. Women wear underwear. So if 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 women wear underwear and men Correct. wear underwear, and the Most High is saying for the man specifically to wear this particular garment, this garment is to cover up his nakedness. It can't be underwear. He's talking about. He's referencing to something Unfortunately else. Unfortunately for you. It's not talking about men. It's talking specifically about the priest, and it is talking about a particular type. And, and I just saw more earlier in the segment explained that when the Most High was creating this, there is a direct parallel to the priests in Egypt who have an opposite dress code. So, and again, as she was saying, we're not the ones who have decided that because the priests are wearing uh, linen and breeches, then no one else can do it. That is a doctrine that has been born somewhere else and normally among the men. Women have not created I'm not saying that because the men wore breeches and because the men wore underwear, women can't wear underwear. That was never stated anywhere. It is the men that are using the word breeches and say, oh, look, the priests wore breeches, so clearly the women cannot wear breeches. We're telling you, these breeches are underwear. So what you are saying is the women should not wear underwear. We're not saying that. That is what the doctrine is saying. In terms of Genesis, Genesis only says quotes. The same word, I'm going to find it for you again. I'm going to pull it up because I don't see why this is a, 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 a sticking point for okay, well, Genesis. What, what, mm-hmm. what, 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 what I'm saying is this. I'm, what, that's what I'm saying. It's not, you, you, you're saying that the breaches are underwear. That's what you're saying. You're saying that those bridges are underwear. And I'm, I'm, I'm putting some underwear. common sense. I'm, I'm putting some common sense to it that uh-huh. that's not talking about. It's not talk. First of all, the women in Israel did not do no priestly things in the nation. It was only the men. Well, it's only the men in, in, in the tribe that did the, the uh, priestly duty. So that particular law pertained to the men only. We're so you're saying about we didn't wear women. underwear. So you're saying Say we didn't wear underwear. So you are saying that because the priest, <laughs> mind you, it wasn't all of the men. It was just the Levites that held the priestly role. So the Levites are the only ones who are allowed to wear underwear, and nobody else should wear underwear because only the the, the Kohen were allowed to do that or are described to do it. That's what you are saying. They also wore bonnets, so we can't cover our heads because the priest covered their heads. Right? No, no, I'm, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm addressing no? breaches. I'm saying that you're saying that that's <laughs> underwear. I'm saying it's not underwear. Okay, I'm not, not saying that. The scripture says it's that. It's saying that it was the closest thing to their skin, that it was covering their loins and covering their side. Have you, I, I, I don't, to prove okay, hold on the under, yeah, you go ahead. One second. You just said earlier. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and address it again in case uh, the brother uh, wasn't in on the conversation. If you go to the book of Exodus 28 and 42, this is the command that the Mosai is telling on to Moshe to tell his brother Aharon. In 41, it first says, you put them on Aharon, again, speaking of all the garments, your brother, and on his sons with him. And you shall anoint them and ordain them and consecrate them, that they may serve me as priests. 42, you shall make for them linen breeches to cover their bare flesh. They shall reach from the loins even to the thighs. So, biblically, the the conversa- and some translations translate it as undergarments. It's on their bare flesh. The what touches your bare flesh is your underwear. And again, like I said, I did the research as it relates to some of what the Egyptian priests were wearing and how they looked. And when you compare the Egyptian priests to Aharon's sons, there is a stark contrast in everything, from the beard, when the Egyptian priests had none. From the bald head to the coverings, the Most High went everything polar opposite. And this is one of those things, and he tells you specifically why in another portion. It says, so that when you go up on, your, on my altar, your nakedness be not discovered. Right. So what is going to cover you from being exposed? Underwear. So it's not a misunderstanding of what breaches means in this text. If we read it contextually and then do a comparative analysis of every time you see breaches come up, you will begin to see that it has something to do with exactly how it was described to the priest. It was underwear. So, the, you know, again, we go back and forth with the conversation and the argument. And furthermore, if we weren't going to be really sticklers, then it would mean that the men could only wear linen breeches, and actually you would be running around right. looking like the NBA before they got longer pants. Like that's how 
your I need it to be linen and I need it to be like right on the mid thigh and that's what you rock. If we're gonna say that men wore breeches, this is what you wear. And you just walk around all day long looking exactly how, but like you said, we're using discernment, but again, we can't smear breeches to cross over into what the European said breeches are. That if we want to go by a Hebraic description of breeches, we would have to go to the book of Exodus 2842. So, you know, right. that's um, that's where we're coming from. That was what was discussed earlier. Right. And, again, it can't be mixed material and it only can be linen. And yeah, let me get it. Let me let the... Yeah, sorry about that. We only got like five minutes on the air. We got like five minutes on the air. So let me let uh, Amayan uh, give you some li- quick last words, Amayan. Go ahead. All right. Quick last words. Uh, man, I've, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I have a lot to say. I guess I ain't got time to do it. But here here in, in Exodus 28, this says from, from your loins even unto your thighs. Now, underwear don't, underwear don't go from your loins all the way down to your thighs. That's not sure. underwear. So I, I don't know your. That's what the scripture says. You just read it just now. That oh, can't be. You just, just because it's under the garment, you seen it's underwear. It, it specifically tells you the length of it. It's giving you a length from your loins to your thigh. That's not well, underwear. Sure. underwear, underwear under your your thigh, brother. Some underwear do go to your thigh. Correct. Box, box some underwear. Thigh. Brother, box that's, be- you. You. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. There are some underwear they make go to your side. Oh, brother, brother, <laughs> brother, brother. Okay, brother. I guess we got. I guess we got to do a whole other show about underwear. <laughs> well, <laughs> under, the fact that it's under the garment is what makes it an undergarment. There's really like no really. There's no debate about that. If it's under all of your clothes, and it's what you wear under. Then it's underwear. I mean, I don't even understand how is this debatable. It's under the clothes. It's underwear. There's really nowhere to go with that. It's an undergarment. <laughs> All right, uh, Mona, uh, bro, Brother Mercy, you want any last words you want to share? Any last words, Brother Mercy? Yeah, I wanted to say real quick, I wanted to say, I mean, I know where this stuff comes from. It comes from the white man influencing the black preachers <laughs> in the black churches. Because I'm telling you, I heard this same thing from the Pentecostal church. I heard this same doctrine. And they don't know yeah. a lick of Hebrew. They don't know a lick of Hebrew. <laughs> they don't know a lick of Hebrew. And they will tell you the same thing this brother is saying. They say the same thing. Women can't wear pants. So that's the first place I heard it. So I know where they're getting this stuff from. They're getting it from the black church. And we can act like we're not influenced by the black church, but many of us are. And the black church is influenced by the white man. Let's just be honest about it. I mean, that's really what's going on. So women wearing the pants came from the black church. And it come from, it's not a Hebrew idea. It's, it's a black church idea. And this thing about the underwear not covering the thigh. You, you could buy underwear that covers the thigh, that goes up to the thigh. There are underwear you can do that. And, and really, like the Susan pointed out, it's not underwear in the European concept. It's just undergarment, which means something you wear under your clothes. That's all it means. That's really all it means. Something you wear. It could be talking about shorts. It, if I wear shorts, that's undergarment. That's a garment underneath my pants. If I wear my shorts underneath my pants, who knows what it is? You know, that's what the Hebrews talking about, the garment underneath the robe, whatever they're wearing, under the, whatever they're wearing underneath to cover their nakedness. That was the point of it all, to cover their nakedness. It wasn't about <laughs> the pain. It was about so nobody would see their genitals. That's really what the issue is about. Because the priest, and this is so that the priest could do their duty when they worked on the altar. When they worked on the altar, again, we're talking about worship. Right. We're not talking about, so we're, we're, the priest did worship. It wasn't, just like when you go to work, it's the same idea. That dress code only applies inside that building. It don't apply once you walk out the building. It only applies when you go to work. So that dress code, they can't tell you what to wear once I leave work and once I clock off. They only can tell me while I'm working. So, again, this is the garments the priest wore while they was working, while they was worshiping. That's what's going on here. And that's all that's going on here. It's, he's the most I'm telling what you have to wear when you come before me. Real simple and plain. And that was only one tribe, like this was pointing out, the tribe we by. That didn't pertain to all men. That only pertain to a certain group of men, which were the priests. Again, if we really use a little common sense and we're honest about the thing, that's really what they talk about. Who wear the pants? That comes from the black church. Let's just be honest. That's really where it comes from. That's why this whole argument came from. You can go to a Pentecostal church today, and the preacher will tell you, and really, to be honest, a lot of us learn Hebrew. A lot of us, Hebrew is not our native tongue. We don't read a book learning Hebrew. So let's be honest about the thing. Hebrew is not our native tongue. So people that speak Hebrew, native, their native tongue, and you know, uh, so English is our native tongue, right? That's the language we've been grown up on, but that's not our native tongue. 
we're learning a foreign language. We communicate by a foreign language. Because they tell us we're from Africa, none of us speak African. We don't speak all the languages in Africa. So that's <laughs> another problem we got. We got, like, see, we got so many problems, it's not even funny. So when you talk about language, it's really not about words. It's about what those words mean. And so when we get to what those words mean, when the past, what it really means is the women head in the household. And that's what's going on in the community. So if you look at it that way, then we, I don't think women should wear pants. But should women literally not wear pants? No, that's not what Brother Mercy is saying. Because it's really not about the clothes. <laughs> it's, 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 it's really, because what does this, what this Paul say? It's not about the outward appearance. It's the woman should adorn herself from the inside. She should, it shouldn't be her outward adorning. We should not look at the woman where she, what she wears. We should look at her uh, inward. You got like two minutes left. Amuna, last words, Amuna, guys. Man, see why I tell you it seems simple, but it's not. You know what I'm saying? It gets people fired up. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, everybody for participating. Our brother who just called in at the last minute, um, if you would like to come on, I know sometimes you got a lot to, we have a lot to say. If you want to come on again, hit Brother Sal up, and when we have another conversation in another two weeks, you can definitely join us on the panel. Yeah. So does I. So uh, with that said, everybody have a blessed um, day, and may we continue to grow and edify one another. And uh, like Brother Mercy said, we got a lot of problems, but if we solve them one at a time, then we got one less problem to deal with. So all praise be to the most high. Everybody have a blessed night. Brother Sal, it's yours. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be hard. Like early 90s heavy metal hard. I'm yelling and screaming and I'm loud. Roar. Geico makes it easy. You can review and update your policy or report a claim on Geico.com or the Geico mobile app. Because shouldn't we all have a little less stress in our lives?